upstairs in closed session and administrative session. Um, so we are to the first item on our agenda, um, which is a brief agenda scheduling update. Um, there are no changes to this evening's agenda. On upcoming agendas, next Monday the 11th, uh, we're scheduled to have a first reading ordinance amending the administrative regulations and a second reading ordinance amending the Tacoma Park Code to provide for adoption of administrative regulations for use of public space and public buildings. And we are also scheduled tentatively to have work session discussions on the uh, award of a contract for solar power installation through a power purchase agreement. And we will have a, uh, we're scheduled to have, if it's necessary after tonight, a continuing discussion from this evening's work session item on uh, City Council interaction with City Committees. The following Monday the 18th, we have a presentation from the Board of Elections. And the following Monday the 25th, uh, a presentation from the Tacoma Junction Task Force. So that's just a couple of the items coming up on future agendas. Um, the next item on our agenda is public comment period. And if anybody wants to comment on anything that is not on our uh, agenda this evening in the uh, presentation and work session item, that would would take comments now. But the special session items, uh, would we would take comments during the special session. So that would just be on the uh, submission of legislative action requests and the consent agenda. So anything else that is on the agenda this evening or anything not on the agenda. And if you'd like to come to the podium and identify yourself, and please keep your comments to three minutes. Welcome. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Trevo. I'm a resident of Ward 4. I came here to share the excitement I had organizing a public event at downtown Silver Spring on the 25th of June. I'm proud to say over 10,000 people at the count of the Montgomery County Police attended the event, even though I thought it was about 12. Uh, it was uh, a full day packed, a five hour uh, cultural event. About 70 participants uh, uh, took place in the event, including 15 we invited from Ethiopia, uh, who were very delighted by the response and the excitement. And uh, the people who came had a good time, stayed behind. Most of the businesses in, in downtown Silver Spring, including the Ethiopian businesses, were packed. Uh, we did a little survey to kind of figure out how much money we brought to the area about three to five hundred thousand dollars. We were very delighted. And uh, <clears throat> I know we sent uh, the invitation a bit late. We were very pleased to have Terry, uh, Councilman, Councilman Terry Simon and Councilman Perry Schultz attended. And next year we're planning a two day event. I'm going to send the market calendar way ahead of time so that you won't miss it. So I'm just here. Oh, another thing. Our media partner, a Silver Spring based uh, uh, broadcasting station, recorded the program and broadcasted it worldwide live about four times. So we put Silver Spring on the map, on the global map. Eight million people watched the program about three times. And uh, for a evening, I brought the program with uh, the message and the objective of the program, the participants and the local businesses who supported it. And uh, it was a wonderful event. Uh, our next program hopefully will bring that kind of visibility to Tacoma Park, our beloved Tacoma Park, and I'll make that uh, public uh, as soon as we're, we're complete in putting it together. Thank you very much. And uh, if I may pass this to Sure. And that'll be it, and thank you. Thank you. Sorry I had to miss it, but I was out of town. I, uh, I was able to attend, and as Tobago said, I was there, and it was uh, uh, great entertainment. I, uh, I thought, though, that it was uh, most beneficial from the, the powerful um, way in which it addressed uh, cultural awareness in our community, and I'm sure it was also a great economic development tool. I uh, am very proud of uh, Ward 4 resident, uh, Tobago Asefa, for organizing such a successful event. And uh, it's great to see, uh, uh, you know, the growth of Ward 4 residents and uh, the empowerment and, and reaching out to the community to uh, help us all grow and grow together. And thank you.
Hi, I'm Ann Hollander. I'm a Ward 5 resident, and I'm the um, co-chair of the Washington Adventist Hospital Land Use Committee. Um, I hope you'll indulge me so that I can make a few brief comments on your um, agenda item for later this evening, because I'd like to join my family at the fireworks event that you have, and it conflicts. So, um, as I mentioned a few weeks ago in, in our presentation to the council, our committee over time has um, questioned how we could interact in a more fruitful way with the council um, and it, you know, really have more of a give and take so that it would guide the operations of our committee. Uh, we've at times felt that, you know, we were doing a good job of gathering a tremendous amount of information and we have a really well-functioning committee of very diverse professionals located in almost all wards of the city. Um, but we've really been frustrated by the lack of uh, useful interaction with the council. Um, we, um, you know, there, we receive very good feedback from city staff about, you know, some of the um, things that are happening with the certificate of need. Um, but we were also told in the last iteration of the committee that we really should avoid discussing the certificate of need um, at any length. And so that's been a frustrating thing for the committee because as time has gone on, we've come to view the certificate of need as sort of integral to our discussion because um, we have to track it closely to understand what the next steps may be in the land use in Tacoma Park. So that's one example of, you know, a situation where the committee's felt a bit of frustration and a lack of direct communication with the council. Um, the other thing that one of our members mentioned is that um, the event this evening is sort of indicative of the situation that we have with the council where we learned something that's very informative for the committee and something that committee members who, again, are very active would like to participate in. But we learned it very late. I mean, it, we, I received notice when I was out of town over the weekend, um, and it was difficult to scramble to make any comments to you this evening where you guys had suggested that, you know, the comments of our committee would be useful to your discussion. Our committee is not even scheduled to meet until the 19th again, so we really won't be able to provide you with useful feedback. So, um, you know, we're available to discuss anything you'd like, um, and I think the questions that are in your work session guidelines are very good ones that you should consider, and, you know, just let us know if there's anything we can contribute to the process. Thanks. Thanks. We appreciate it. And uh, we know we need these discussions. And uh, I know that uh, staff apologizes for getting the, the notice out to the committees late. And yeah, I understand that. And I had a discussion um, with the staff earlier today about that. So I appreciate that. But these are really things that probably could be planned farther in advance so that the committees would really be able to provide you with genuinely useful feedback. And, and we'll... We'll accommodate that, and we look forward to it. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'm Seth Jeevan, Equate Casa, 6719 Conway Avenue. I'm also here to speak about the committees because i got to run. And I'm glad you're having the discussion. I recently served on the task force for environmental action and at times was fairly frustrated with the process and noting, you know, the expertise and the dedication that you have from volunteers and how to best, you know, get follow through on that. Um, I believe you've probably received a letter from Lorg Charcutian, who said a lot of things I would like to say, so I'd like to endorse that one. If you haven't seen it, I can, Colin can probably forward it to you. Um, in addition to the comments she made, um, I thought uh, some other points would be to make sure that the scope of the committees or the task force, I think a task force is actually a little more valuable, it's a little more concrete short timeline, very um, action-oriented, uh, is to you know have the scope defined in such a way that people aren't overreaching in their research such that you really can act on whatever does come out. Um, with the Environmental Task Force, we did a, a one-year, a five-year, kind of ten-year kinds of plans, and right now I'm, I'm glad to see some of the outcomes we've done so far, but it took almost a year to get some of them started, so um, I'm glad you're doing the discussion, and I hope you guys... Um, listen to all the feedback you get from the committees. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? 
Okay, then we will move along to council comments. Councilman Percent. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I just have one. I, I want to um, personally thank everyone who um, offered their kind thoughts and sympathies to me. Um, my in-laws were involved, for those of you who don't know, my in-laws were involved in a very serious car accident in Astoria, Oregon uh, a couple weeks ago, and my mother-in-law unfortunately did not uh, make it. And um, I really wanted to say how grateful I am for the support in the community and the city staff as well as other people who have offered their condolences. It's very, very comforting to me and the family. Thank you. Councilmember Wright. Uh, I do want to say uh, on the work session tonight about the, the council committees, this is just the beginning of the discussion, so I appreciate the comments that we received tonight. and. Um, the nice thing about the work session is that it's it's not um, we're not voting on anything and we have opportunity for future input as well I do apologize that uh, we got the information out late um, the second thing I just want to check in on is whether we've heard anything from Pepco regarding the poles uh, installation in the Penn neighborhood is I know we've been kind of trying to figure out a what their timeline is uh, uh, for, for completing that task so we can then pester the other utilities to move their uh, their stuff. I'm going off memory here, Councilmember Rice. I'll um, take a look at the email Daryl had sent me tomorrow. Um, wish I had better news. Obviously, uh, Pepco um, doesn't control what the other utilities do, and so they're still sort of in a queue waiting for the other utilities to do their thing. Um, but Pepco is saying that they're completed with their work now? Is my that sense is that they're largely complete. Like I said, I'd like to just refresh okay. my memory tomorrow. Um, but what I can do is check that email tomorrow and then see if there's um, contacts we can give you, um, maybe at some of the other utilities, and see if you can bring some political pressure yeah. to bear. Happy to do that. Okay. Um, and then the second thing is just to give people an update on Washington Gas. I know in the Penn neighborhood people are very concerned about when that project is happening. Um, we're still waiting for the final schedule. Um, uh, from Washington Gas and Daryl and other members of the C staff are going to have a work plan implementation meeting with them and then a regular check-in meeting and we will continue, the city will continue to post the information that we get to uh, the, the city web page that's been created for this topic area. Councilmember Schultz. Uh, several things. Um, I. Uh, I think Tavavo. Oh, you're still here. Good. I, you know, I enjoyed attending the um, the Ethiopian festival in Silver Spring, um, and I went there with the understanding that this was the so-called first annual, and I found myself amazed and uh, utterly surprised by the uh, numbers of people that were in in who were attending for this for a first-time event. That you know, obviously, you you were could, you could tell that it was a first time, and it was you know you're trying things out, but uh, from just the the sheer attendance, um, it, it was incredible. And I just want to extend my congratulations to you. I know these things are an enormous amount of work, and uh, I agree that next year, this is the sort of thing that can do nothing but get bigger. So uh, it may be that you'll outgrow that section of Ellsworth Street, I would imagine, and have to uh, move it somewhere else. But so I just wanted to congratulate you on that. Uh, I did want to mention that uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, I learned uh, some information from the county council member, Nancy Florine, you know, that the, there's a, the, the state is planning to build a, at the, the intersection of University and New Hampshire, what I call a bus transfer station there. I guess that's not the actual technical name for it. Transit Center. Yeah. Transit Center. Um, and it's been, had been held up uh, uh, by negotiations uh, between the state and the owner of the real estate there. Who, um, there was some, dis, I guess, disagreement over the pricing of the uh, of the land, but anyway, I'm told that that in, that 
has been completed, that the property has exchanged hands, and that uh, the uh, construction on that project should begin at some point. I have no idea when that would be, but probably soon, sooner than, than later. This is something that probably we had hoped to see get under construction probably a year ago. 100% the, the, of the money for it comes from the federal government to a TIGER grant. And it's going to be built on the space that is currently occupied by the Taco Bell. Um, so just to, uh, that's just a heads up for people who ride buses to that part of uh, Tacoma Park. Um, and also with regard to the comments made about the notification on uh, this today's work session, I just want to re re reiterate uh, what uh, Council Member, uh, what, what what, what the mayor and uh, council member Wright just said is that I consider this to be a very important uh, subject. I've given it a lot of thought. I'm looking forward to this discussion, and I think we should take our time with it and make sure that we do get a lot of input from uh, our, our members of our various statutory committees and task forces and commissions. Uh, so this is not something we need to rush, but we certainly do need to get started. Also have a question uh, with f for the Department of Public Works. Uh, a couple months ago, the uh, traffic circle newly installed up at Kirkland and uh, Kennewick was damaged. Uh, a lot of the plant life was decimated by a very large tractor trailer that decided that it wanted to go across the traffic circle rather than around it and destroyed an awful lot of it. And uh, I know that uh, the Department of Public Works has got its uh, agenda pretty busy, but um, the um, plant life in that thing is sort of coming apart. It's starting to turn into a weed patch. It's, frankly, it looks absolutely awful. The little, there's some uh, concrete triangles there that are used to divide uh, traffic as it uh, enters the circle, and those are completely weed-bound, um, and it looks, the whole thing kind of looks like it's abandoned. And it, uh, I, I'd just like to get an idea of when that's going to be repaired. Um, and I also finally want to say one last thing, and that's to thank um, the, uh, the Department of Housing and Community Development uh, for sponsoring a, uh, a, a community get-together at the Tijuana uh, Cafe up at uh, on University Boulevard to talk about the new AV. It was an interesting gathering because there was no meeting, there was no agenda. It was just an opportunity uh, sponsored by the city uh, to in, in gather community residents and business people together to talk about what was going on, sort of rub elbows, and I attended it, uh, and a n number of people did, and it was a lot of fun, and I just want to thank them for taking the trouble to do that. I think it was worthwhile. Councilmember Siemens. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and I... Uh, just wanted to uh, mention a couple things about yesterday's activities. Uh, first of all, I uh, enjoyed the uh, the parade yesterday, um, but uh, I wanted to talk most uh, this evening about the fireworks display. Um, I have a statement from the committee. Uh, as many of you know, the fireworks were canceled last evening. Uh, postponed until this evening. It will be uh, a display this evening at 9.30 at the middle school field on Piney Branch Road. But the Independence Day Committee uh, in their statement says, it is very sorry that we had to postpone last evening's fireworks program. We regret any inconvenience this change caused to you, the public. The decision to postpone the fireworks was a collective one among the committee officers, the fire marshal, and a Tacoma Park Police representative. While the threat of rain was one criterion, the driving force was that the fireworks company was way behind schedule. The full display would not be ready until well beyond the 9.30 scheduled start time. 
we felt it was best to not have the crowd wait so long, especially given the weather. Our MC announced the fireworks display postponement between 9 and 9.15 p.m. The committee members are sick about this error and are taking steps to minimize the recurrence. We have scheduled this year's fireworks display, as I said earlier, at 9.30 this evening at the Tacoma Park Middle School. Uh, I'd also like to uh, thank City Manager Barb Matthews and especially Chief Ricucci for the extra effort that this has uh, caused them and, and uh, thanking them for the stepping to the plate and helping us out through this difficult uh, situation. Thank you. Councilmember Robinson. I just, I know that we're going to talk about the, uh, um, the relationship with, with our city committees, but it, I, don't, I want to just plant the seed in the minds of my colleagues that maybe having a recurring time when we do this evaluation and making sure that the committees know about it, they can have a way to think ahead and plan and help us understand their needs. I'll, we'll talk more about it when we get to that point. Um, I made an inquiry a while back about the um, the marks that are showing up around at least Ward 2. I don't know if they're showing up around other parts of the city. In Lots of yellow, which I understand is gas line folks. Um, but they more and more keep being added. Um, and we haven't really gotten an answer from the gas company other than the one spot where they said that the, they were painting the dots in and then they were drilling in and patching. They thought those were spots where they were looking for gas leaks. Um, but there are other things that are, they're not dots. They're like strips going into people's yards. And... Um, and I, I don't think we've ever gotten an answer to the folks at, I think it's 7110 Central, about what's going on through their yard, because I think maybe they have all three colors in their yard that's actually not in the public right-of-way, but up into their yard. And I've seen it in a couple other places. So I don't know what's happening, but um, it would be good to know before it happens. Um, <laughs> And I, I understand that it could be, you know, private entities doing things. I, I've just had the experience of working on the sewer line at my house, and I have painted lines across my yard, and it did, in fact, end up involving my neighbor because there's a, we have a shared connection, but that, I, that can't be what's happening. Not everybody in the city is, you know, having their, their sewer line and water line replaced. So if we could figure out what that is so we could inform people, other people would, would like to hear about that. Um, I don't know if the other council members know this or not, but there was a there was a dog that was hit and killed in our uh, neighborhood at um, I think it's at Prince George's and Circle, which is one of the areas um, where there was a toddler that was hit. I think in the 30 days prior to that, um, or came close to being. I don't know. I think that the car, they get bumped by the car was the deal. So um, everyone was okay. But the dog is not okay. The dog is not coming back. And um, the neighbors would like to revisit the issue around the sidewalk there. That's the, I think that's in that stretch. I'm not exactly sure if it's the same exact, but I think that's in the stretch where they'd like to have that one piece of sidewalk that um, is missing along Prince George's Avenue uh, filled in. And then um, they'd also like to talk about um, some of the bigger traffic calming issues because they... They have the issue that people blow through all the stop signs. They come down Prince George's Avenue and they, you know, come to a slow stop at um, Elm Avenue and roll on through, and then they, they blow the stop signs all the way down uh, Prince George's out to New Hampshire Avenue as they cut through the neighborhood. Um, the police responded and said that they would do some intermittent enforcement there, um, hot spot enforcement like they do in other areas, but um, it seems like it's a significant and ongoing challenge for the cut through traffic um, and uh, that's in the Saska area but there's also kind of a, an active subgroup there uh, Forest Park um, uh, that does a, they're very engaged in, in and interested in doing something with that so we should we should talk about how to make that happen and the last thing is I very much enjoyed the 4th of July uh, parade and festivities it's always uh, it's always fun to get to see everybody in their in their festive uh, their festive outfits and the different costumes and cars and everything like that and I, I appreciate all the people who 
work together to make that activity happen for the city and all those all those volunteers. So thank you, thank you very much. I'd also like to thank the uh, committee and all the volunteers who uh, worked to put on the festivities for the fourth. Uh, I think the, it's uh, it was everything was going very very well yesterday, and I'm sorry that there were the difficulties with the uh, fireworks, but I think the uh, parade was. Uh, quite enjoyable and uh, I think it was longer this year than, than it has been in the past since everybody acknowledged that it was going down to the Franklin and Maple Avenue and I think uh, most of us actually got down there this year right. and uh, enjoyed seeing uh, all the people in that section of the parade that usually gets cut off when everybody stops at the uh, at the reviewing stand. I think we also have to thank them. If they're going to get the blame for the fireworks thing they really had no control over, we can thank them for the weather. We have to thank you for the <laughs> weather not being too hot. So. Um, I also wanted to note that uh, I was sorry to miss our last meeting, which was two weeks ago, uh, and I appreciate uh, Councilmember Snipper taking over as uh, Mayor Pro Tem and uh, running the meeting. Uh, that was the first meeting that I've missed since I've been mayor, and I think it may be the third mayor that third meeting that I've missed in 18 years. Um, but I had a good time at a family wedding in Florida. Uh, and then last week the council was at the uh, Maryland Municipal League convention and uh, there were a couple of uh, nice things that happened there. Uh, I was elected uh, president of the Maryland Mayor's Association, so I will be uh, yes. leading that organization this year. Um, and I was also named by the president of MML to be the uh, new chair of the MML Legislative Committee which will be receiving the requests that we'll be discussing later in the meeting, meeting from all the municipalities for the uh, legislative action requests. And so I look forward to uh, leading that effort of the municipalities in Annapolis this year. Um, I was also joined on the board of directors by our city manager, Barb Matthews, who is the new president of the Maryland City County Managers Association and therefore represents them on the board of the Maryland Municipal League. So congratulations to her. And I also just wanted to note uh, that there was uh, some discussion at the uh, Montgomery Chapter meeting uh, dinner in Ocean City uh, with representatives from the county about next steps for the uh, tax duplication task force and possible next steps for uh, ways to deal with that either in the present format or a different format. <coughs> and uh, there was uh, some agreement to uh, press ahead and try and get the uh, task force activities wrapped up and then uh, have a, a different discussion about uh, other possible ways to deal with tax duplication so that uh, some of those efforts uh, did get a little bit farther along in Ocean City. And that's all I've got. Um, so we'll move to the city manager's comments. Uh, just one item this evening. I did want to just follow up on the mayor's comments about the revenue sharing task force. Uh, about two weeks ago, I guess I talked to Kathleen Boucher of the county executive's office about how to move the report forward and get it done. Um, with everybody's summer schedules, it looks like we won't be able to meet until early September, but we do have a meeting date between um, both the county and the municipalities, and we're working on getting a second and hopefully final meeting date sometime in early October. So um, my hope is that we will wrap up the report and get that to the county executive sometime in the fall. Good. Um, we'll move to our next agenda item which is a presentation and work session on the applicant's report to the Board of License Commissioners to expand restaurant come to Africa at uh, 6834 New Hampshire Avenue. So I guess... Well, I can know? start it off. I'll just okay. mention that um, they have a slightly updated PowerPoint presentation, so we're just swapping that out. Okay. Um, the Come to Africa restaurant is located at 6834 New Hampshire Avenue, and um, it has an opportunity to expand into an adjacent space in order to um, serve alcoholic beverages in the larger space, they've gone to the Montgomery County Board of License Commissioners for approval for that uh, adjustment. Uh, the City of Tacoma Park asked the Board of License Commissioners to hold off on a decision 
uh, to give an opportunity for the applicant to address uh, the City Council and explain the proposal. The owner, Alphonse Ate, I hope I said that right, um, is here this evening and will be making a presentation in just a moment. Um, the uh, copy of uh, his earlier presentation is attached, as well as some information uh, from the police department and from and copies of the letters that were sent by the police department and the city council to the board of licensed commissioners. Um, on next Monday, July 11th, um, if you wish to move forward with a resolution concerning this request, um, there would be a that resolution would be considered, and the public could testify at that time on the resolution. You could choose to um, communicate to the Board of License Commissioners if you endorse the idea of the um, alteration of the alcoholic beverage license, if you d wish to oppose that uh, change, or if you wish to take no official comment and leave the decision up to the Board of License Commissioners. The Board of License Commissioners does make the final decision on this type of a request. Um, the, uh, in just a moment, we'll have Mr. Ate. Um, present his information and the police chief is here and I can answer some questions about uh, the alcoholic beverage process but essentially the um, license commissioners do look at the kind of floor layout and space that an alcoholic beverage license um, supports and that's the issue that's before them on this request. I'm not used to using glasses, but uh, <laughs> I'm trying my best. I use the only one I want to read. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and City Council, Chief of Police, and the audience. Um, I'm very, very grateful to be here in your midst to present to you uh, my project. Um, I have. I don't know if you. Yes, we, we have. We have, oh, we have uh, oh, video. Thank you. This technology. <laughs> yeah. Technology. All right. Yeah. Um, my name is Alphonse Ate. I'm from Cameroon. I'm a legal resident here in Maryland for the past six years or five. Um, I was opportunity to have a, a, a restaurant. When I came here, I started as a security officer, and after that, uh, because of my background and uh, before I came here, I was a researcher. I put some money together with my family and we started a restaurant. It was formerly called Congress Restaurant and now uh, it's called Come to Africa Restaurant. <coughs> um, when I started, it, it was uh, like a scratch and I started trying to try to make it look up, uh, nice and attractive for people to, to come because if you don't have a nice uh, restaurant, people will not come to a restaurant. So uh, after two years, um, I got, uh, I started having, you know, customers more than the, I had before. And uh, uh, looking at the capacity, uh, if I have to follow the PowerPoint, uh, the first page is uh, an overview or a synopsis of uh, why I'm here. If you have go through that, you see that uh, when I submitted my application or uh, request for expansion, um, I was called by the Board of Commission for Montgomery for a hearing and when I went there they told me they had a letter from the police, uh, Chief of Police and from the City Council that uh, they are opposing my extension uh, because of some reasons that we have been stated in the letter from the police. So before I go into that I would like to, I would like to uh, let you uh, see 
the location of uh, the restaurant. Maybe some of you have been passing by, but you don't know where the restaurant is. It's on New Hampshire Avenue, just uh, after East West Highway, going towards uh, um, DC, opposite shoppers. And on the screen, you see two restaurants, I mean, two uh, shops. One is come to Africa, and on the other side is one stop, uh, rest, uh, one stop shop. Uh, that's the, the, the shop which is vacant, and we ha share a common wall. So it's uh, possible from the, uh, uh, due to the, um, the, the permission from the, uh, I haven't got permission from the landlord, it's possible for me to make an expansion so that I can have adequate space. So I have the landlord here, he came to, to represent uh, their father, uh, is, um, who is uh, actually the landlord, they are here to represent them. So, um, on the, this is the frontage on the, on the, on the, you can see also, um, this picture is trying to give you an idea of how the, my, the location is. The residence that we, sh where, that I, I, I have in front, on the side, and, and so on. So on the front, we have the shopping center, which is the uh, shoppers. Uh, across, you have Wendy's, you have shoppers. And on, on the left, uh, we have uh, residential areas, um, about just two or three b buildings, uh, uh, homeowners that are on the far left. And then on the far right, on the far right, uh, no, this behind, we have a forest. Uh, you know, you can see from your screen, there's, there's forest. All right, so uh, coming to why I want to extend the, the, the restaurant, make this extension, is I try to give Come to Africa a, a, a new face. And I say new face, try to, you know, make, you know, change the look of it, make it uh, more appealing for customers and convenient for customers to be able to, to come and eat and uh, uh, have a bit of relaxation after the stress that they, they have gone through in their work. So, my main area of concern is the kitchen and the restroom. And the, the, the restroom actually is one of the area, area which is very sensitive here because I have two restrooms, my capacity is 99. I have two restrooms and sometimes I have patrons who come and stay on the line just to use the restroom. You could see them frustrated at times just because somebody is in the restroom and it, it cannot come out. For the ladies, you have just one. You can have about four ladies waiting to just to go to the restroom. So this is actually a problem for me. I, I really uh, acknowledge that it's a problem. And that could explain why some, some people, due to the urge, the urgent urge that they have, they cannot get in, they, they are tempted to go out. And that could explain why a couple, a couple of times uh, the police have, uh, you know, either caught somebody, you know, using uh, uh, the parking lot in a rest as a restroom, which is not good. So, I am looking at forward to address this problem following my, the expansion. And then another uh, area of concern is the kitchen. Now, my, the kitchen is just as I got it because you get a new place. That's what you get. It's the smallest I've ever seen around, and it makes it difficult for us to to sell food to, you know, to, to, to if people give their orders, it takes um, a hell of time, maybe one hour sometime for, you know, to just serve two, three customers because of the smallness of the kitchen. And that is really an issue. It makes us, some customers get discouraged and leave, and it, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, give us the, our, our goal of selling more food than alcohol, than, than, than alcohol beverage. And the one area of concern is the security. Um, I'm, I'm doing all of my best to make sure we have good security on, 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 on site. And um, as you will see along the line, when we go to, to uh, the area where I have pictures, I already have put in place a, a good security. I have already in, uh, uh, got in uh, police officers to, to keep that during weekends so that we should uh, limit uh, incidents that can, you know, that that occurs in the in the in, in the, the restaurant and its uh, surroundings. All right. So on this slide, we have the impact. Uh, like I said, uh, we've, if if the restaurant is big enough, we have clients who will come and they will have space to sit, and that will encourage them to eat. Sometimes I have customers. They, they say, "Where can we sit? We want to order food." Then they don't have a place to sit because. 
uh, the place is so small, um, and they keep they have to stand. At the stand, they will be forced to drink instead of drink instead of eating. So if we have enough seats, people can comfortably sit down and eat while others are on the floor enjoying themselves. They can sit and eat, and that also we have to uh, avoid people going going out to loiter on the parking lot because they have a place to sit. They won't be, you know, they won't want to be going out every, 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 every minute. So, um, uh, this expansion uh, will give us uh, an increase in food sales in the sense that we are able to have enough space, adequate space to produce food very quick, quickly for our customers and make, make them have, uh, uh, shorten the time they have to wait. Otherwise, they will leave before we ever get food ready. So, um, so uh, uh, looking at the restroom, like I said, a bigger restroom with the, 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 with the space we have adjacent now, we plan to make, instead of two restrooms that we have, we plan to have about five for men, five different, uh, I mean five restrooms for men, and four for ladies. If I have that, I won't have any excuse if somebody go out because uh, there will be enough space, enough uh, opportunity for everybody who wants to use the restroom to use it. No, they will not be standing on the on the line anymore, waiting to use the restroom and some going out. And um, now, one other concern um, that uh, uh, that this uh, chief raised was the, that of uh, uh, the neighbors. Um, he said that residents, our activity could uh, influence uh, uh, affected residents. Uh, uh, based on that, I tried to go around before coming here. Try to make a survey. I, I visited all, almost all the neighbors in our shopping center and the residents. Uh, when I say all, uh, there's one uh, big residential area where I interviewed two 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 uh, residents uh, in, uh, there, and all of them, both of them, said oh, they don't have a problem with me um, having an extension because uh, they've not had any incidents that relates to my business and. They haven't gotten uh, much of a complaint. On uh, this survey, um, uh, this was one of the surveys I did uh, during uh, one of the weekends, Monday through Fridays. I just, at one point in the night, I, I stopped all the activity. I said, okay, now I want to find out your opinion. Uh, to your opinion, do you think we have our restroom is adequate or not? And the response I got was out of about 250, 225 patrons, uh, 150 said uh, our the restroom is inadequate. Uh, 31 said it's adequate, and 44 uh, uh, were neutral. We just did that with a rough estimate uh, count of hands. So uh, this actually gives us the solutions that we got for restroom. You know, um, uh, creation of large restroom, uh, good uh, restroom facilities to avoid people going out, and then uh, we the presence of a police officer every weekend. It's going to deter some people who want to come out to use the restroom because uh, we tell them if anybody comes to use the restroom, arrest them and you know give them uh, whatever sanction that is needed or that is required by the law. And uh, based on that, the police is going around every 30 minutes, making sure that nobody is loitering on the on the parking lot or doing anything out of normal. And um, this is just what we have as our restroom situation right now. Um, um, of rest, before, before today, I had to call in an architect to give me an idea what he thinks the best uh, situation would be for a restroom. So he had, we had two options, either to have the restroom upstairs or to have the downstairs. Downstairs, he found that there's plenty of room downstairs that could provide uh, more than uh, f five for men and four for ladies. Um, this is still pending um, acceptance or authorization. If authorization is given, then he can go back to his work and start to do, uh, make the right uh, 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 paperwork. Now, this is a scenario in, in my kitchen. You know, just two uh, workers in the kitchen, and this is the only way way through to where you have you have uh, the, the the microwave and all that. So. If one is doing something this way, and there's no way for somebody to pass. So it's very tiny, and I badly need this space in order to, uh, you know, increase my, my, my kitchen space and make it more convenient for people to, to be able to work and produce food faster. 
If you look on the right, you have a microwave standing on another microwave, and I bet you there was another third one there until when they wanted to drop, then fall off. I said, no, we can't do it this way. It's better where we don't serve food uh, on time than to have a, an accident. So if we have adequate space, we have good, uh, you know, we have places where we can have enough microwave, enough uh, refrigerate, uh, refrigeration, and I you know it will be able for us, we will be able to serve food faster than we are doing at the moment. So uh, he, the architect too, was you know, taking measurements to see what he's going to do. So our uh, objective is to have a 70% to 30% uh, food to alcohol ratio. So ratio. If we do that, at least people will eat more food than, 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 than drinking. And that will make sense. It will, it will reduce uh, a lot of uh, incidents that have been happening uh, that could have occurred if we were selling more alcohol than food. So all this goes to support that point. And um, so um, we, uh, uh, if we are able to have a, a, a larger kitchen, kitchen uh, we can uh, augment our menu to include so many other uh, food items. That will increase uh, the, the, the choices that the customers have. Uh, right now we are limited because our choices are very narrow. Due to the space we have, we don't have enough refrigeration. We don't have enough, uh, you know, storage uh, as far as the kitchen is concerned so we cannot keep a, a, a good variety of food so some people come they go because they don't have what they need what they, they want to, they would have loved to eat so a big, bigger kitchen will have more uh, dishes and we can serve more food than we expect if we based on what we have now what we have now is really limiting us from you know, serving a customer and this uh, is what we plan. We plan to have breakfast, plan to have lunch. There's, there's no magic. We cannot do this except we have an extension where, where we can have proper storage facilities that can give uh, hygienic food uh, you know, for, for customers. That way we can, we can start having sales from the morning before uh, evening, late in the evening. We can have an, an, uh, some revenue that we, we could you know, uh, encourage us not to stay to wait for late, late commerce. You know. Uh, that is one of the objective of uh, increasing the kitchen. All this goes to reduce alcohol sales and boost our, uh, food sales so that we could get revenue and then we uh, reduce the uh, uh, quantity of alcohol that we're selling, which is, uh, I think, uh, uh, something. Uh, uh, so our current menu is just what we are saying now, and it's like I said, it's even on this menu. We, we just have about four or five that we can provide we provide because of the space that we have. Then um, let me go to the next step. Now for security, I, I try to do my best. I invest more, in the highest in security because I know it's the number one priority. Right now I have people, I have security officers every weekend, very, you know, people who, who when you see, you know they are, they are there because they want to maintain peace. And we, no matter what age you are, when you come, they search you up and down before you get in, so that they, they are sure you don't have anything dangerous on you. That way, it gives customers, patrons, to the confidence to, to come to the place. And like you see, this this is uh, last weekend. I, I I started having park police on site, and I, I'll be having them as far as I'm functioning. I do my best to maintain them, and I'm always willing to have the, the best security, whatever. Uh, to be able to uh, address the problem of you know, incidents so that, um, I, like the chief said, the, uh, the Takuma police is overworked, so we don't want to add more burden on, on them. That's why I want uh, I take security as uh, my priority in, uh, in that. Now, this is just a scan of uh, the survey that I did. Actually, what you see is the handwriting of the various residents and, and uh, the other members of the, the shopping center who approve uh, of, of the extension. I asked them, in order to maintain a cordial relation with my, the resident, I had to go to each and everyone, ask what did, what they think about my expansion, is my business doing any, any uh, having any problem with them? So I get the feedback. Some of them said that the main problem is the parking. Parking is a, a real problem. And they, but they, they, they realized too that I wasn't the, actually the fault because most, as at now, most of my customers come in the evening. 
and by that time they are, they are left, they've left. So, but I'm working on this. I told them I'm working on this, working with the landlord to make sure that the the, 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 the area behind which is a very big parking lot has to be, to tr be traced, be marked so that uh, customers will be able to know that it's a parking lot. And I've also, also put two floodlights behind. It's very bright in the, in, the, in the evening behind so that nobody can ambush uh, a customer who comes to park. So that way uh, I try to improve the security around, around business center. So this actually, I put this, uh, type it out clearly so that everybody who, who sees it will see the numbers or the phone numbers, the names and those who actually endorse um, the, my expansion. Uh, a, a few, about two, or two uh, uh, tenants in the, in the shopping center, they, they saw with me, they said they approved it, but they could not you know, put it in writing because they are not the owners of the place or they are either in partnership, they need to have the, the, the accord of their partners. So if you see not committed, it's because they don't want to put anything down in writing. So that, with that, I try to strengthen relationship with my neighbors. If you look at this graph, out of uh, 13 people that I, I met, all of them approve. Um, I, none actually told me they disapprove, uh, but uh, three said they were not committed. They approved, but they, they didn't commit themselves in writing. So uh, that's what the, the graph explained. Uh, so, um, like I said, the neighbors raised concern of parking, rare security, and uh, littering, littering in the parking lot. When there's a crowd, there's, there's always some, you know, something would the people will always drop something on the floor and so on. So to reduce littering, I, I tried and I'm planning to, to, to reinforce that there should not be a, a loitering on the parking lot. And this could be reduced if we have adequate space inside for people to sit. Some people go out because oh, they are tired or they're standing, it's, you know, it's choked choke in and so they have to go out and loiter. But if we have enough space, people will comfortably sit and we'll have few people outside. And then the police uh, is going to reinforce that people don't stay in their cars out, out, outside in the parking lot. People don't loiter around. If you are, you are not inside, you either leave or you stay in, except you want to have a, a stick of cigarette, then you can go out and have your cigarette and go back in. So those are things that we're doing. Um, so um, coming to at my conclusion, I'll, I'll rather say that um, uh, the, the main objective, like I said, of having my expansion, the expansion is, is actually to reduce some of these problems that we've been having. Um, right now, uh, at the capacity of 99, if we have just 80 people in that place, it's, it's in, in the way that, you know, somebody just going to the restroom, who bump into somebody, and once you bump into somebody, oh, that's something. They start querying and this and that. A lot of incidents have occurred just because Somebody said, oh, this person touched me when he was uh, about to pass. The person I was just passing to the restroom and, um, you know, I had to push, and that's one of the areas of concern. And then uh, if we can have a larger kitchen, uh, I bet you we will serve more food than uh, we, are, we are doing now, and that will help, you know, reduce the, you know, incidents due to people, you know, take, uh, having more alcohol than food. And... Uh, Apart from that, the economic impact cannot be overemphasized because uh, I'll be definitely have a, a larger crew. I'll employ twice or three times the, the workforce that I have now, and that is going to boost the economic. And like we, everybody knows, um, uh, this country is, is, is really uh, small business are what makes this country great. And uh, I think that. Um, with this, I have exhausted what I think I can do, um, except I can have some advice or recommendations. Uh, to the, thank you, sir. Thanks, Thanks very much. Um, we're going to hear from the police chief next. Sure, police, police chief. I think you have a, a packet in front of you that documented all the calls and the incidents that we've handled. Um, since March, there has been absolutely no calls at the uh, restaurant. Um, the, uh, 
this contingent here came in and saw me before uh, we had the council meeting uh, a couple weeks ago and made this presentation to me. I will tell you it's one of the better presentations I've ever had made from a place that was under investigation that we've had problems with. Um, and um, <clears throat> it does address the issues we've raised. Uh, obviously, there have been problems there. Um, we went back, and I've given you everything I've got, uh, but since March there has been no incidents at the restaurant. Obviously, we have concerns what had occurred previously there, uh, which endangered both the community, the patrons, and obviously my police officers in, in carrying out their duties there. Uh, these things would obviously reduce, I think, some of the problems that occurred, and I can't argue with this presentation. Uh, obviously, um, the response is what we like to see when we have problems, obviously, in a, a community that people respond to them and do what is so we can eliminate. Only time will tell if these, you know, these will continue. Uh, obviously, the management has done a much better job since March when we pointed out these things and presented them to the liquor board the first time. And um, I think the facts that you have in front of you speak for themselves, and I'm obviously available for any questions concerning uh, this issue. Okay, thanks. Deputy City Manager, have anything? No. Uh, Councilor um, McClay. If, if they expand their restaurant and they don't get a change to their license, do they lose their existing license? No, but I think that the, the, I mean, the, the problem would be that you wouldn't be able to serve the tables in the expanded area. Isn't that, right. is that the issue? I, I believe that's it's, okay. the area um, that's covered by the alcoholic beverage license. So uh, your restaurant is in uh, the ward that I represent. Um, and one of the things I guess I wanted to start with sort of in the global picture um, is that I think that our community supports small businesses and is, um, is happy to see small businesses thrive and would like to be supportive of small businesses. Um, you have some significant challenges uh, in that um, you have a history of, of police calls and other issues at the site and at this time you don't have the support of the police department for a change in the license which you know for me personally is a is a very significant issue in considering whether or not to um, to support a, a license um, so one of the things I think in the in the in the big picture is thinking about like who are your your neighbors and so I read the proposal and I see a survey of the neighbors and the neighbors include um, people who work in the immediate businesses and someone from 701 um, Ethan Allen, which I believe is the apartment complex that's um, the last one on Ethan Allen before you cross over New Hampshire Avenue, and a couple of listings on New Hampshire Avenue with no name, and I can't really quite figure out what those are. But I um, mean, you know, as part of the Tacoma Park community, there's sort of a broader sense of what the neighborhood is, and those um, those residential streets that back up to the property are the groups that are in the in the evenings when these activities are going on are the folks who are the, the ones who are significantly impacted by the activities those are um, those are their backyards that people are are urinating into essentially um, and the the lights that have to be installed to light the parking lot to make it safe those lights are shining in uh, to the to the yards and, and homes of, of the people who uh, abut that property. So I think that you know in a in a big sense, then the your your neighbors aren't necessarily the folks who occupy the adjacent businesses during the day, um, but include more of the of the residents of the community. And I, I would certainly like to hear from them and. Um, and hear what they have to say about it. And we will, I guess we'll have a public hearing on this next week where those folks will have a, an opportunity to, com to comment. Um, so also in the big picture, it seems like what's happening now is that the exterior of the restaurant um, is, is essentially being used as restaurant space. And I think that's, um, that's, that's a part of the challenge, people going outside to smoke. Um, and I'm not quite sure from the design 
you know, from what's happening with the drawings of the facility, I see one drawing that shows a lot of bar space, a lot of space that's that's essentially designated to the bar, some table space, and then the small kitchen space. And I, it just makes me wonder, like, how much of the the problems that are exist are about the way that the existing space was designed and utilized, and and you know what was the priority in that design for making sure that you had adequate bathrooms or that you had a, a kitchen that was big enough to get to a 70-30 food alcohol ratio within um, what it is you have currently there. Um, I, I think that the pieces of the plan uh, make sense in some ways. So you know, expanding the restaurant to have more space, having nine restroom stalls instead of three, um, identifying what the issues are. I think that those are um, those are those are good pieces of the puzzle towards moving forward. But I I just don't see that. Um, I'm not convinced that that's going to really address the um, the challenges and the issues that the restaurant is having now. If they can't address those issues in some way within the existing space, that everything has to be about the um, about the expansion. And um, I'm happy to hear that um, there's been a, a, a pres security presence that has been added, and happy to hear that that has helped with the reduction in the um, in the calls. Um, but I definitely would like to hear more from the residents that are there in the in the hours when these different activities are going on and, and how they're impacted. And I think I'll let I won't take up all the time, I'll let some more people comment first. Councilmember Siemens. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Addy, I wonder if you might come back to the podium because I had a couple questions. But as you uh, as you come up I just uh, want to thank you for your presentation. I think uh, it's very detailed and I think it's been extremely helpful to me. Uh, and understanding uh, what you're doing and what you're attempting to do. Uh, I have to tell you that some of my constituents uh, are from Cameroon and, and attend your, uh, you know, patronize your restaurant. So I'm certainly interested in your success. And of course, uh, uh, the success of the small businesses in Tacoma Park is important to all of us. Uh, the um, I've never been to your restaurant, and I apologize for that. I probably should have uh, tried to attend uh, and patronize the businesses in Tacoma Park. Um, what hours are you are you open? Okay. Um, um, officially, I have uh, for the beverage uh, in order to sell alcohol. I have uh, Monday to um, Thursday from ten o'clock to one a.m. For me to serve alcohol, um, in, um, Fridays from from uh, 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. for me to serve alcohol. That is Friday and Saturday and Sundays from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. for me to sell alcohol. But I can operate uh, if I have, if I if I'm selling food, I can operate up to four. If I'm selling food, not you alcohol. can you can operate. Up to four. Up to four a.m. Four a.m. Yes, if I'm selling food. And yes. what uh, no. what hours do you serve food? Uh, we serve food uh, whenever our, our door is open. We serve food up till when we, we close. We, there's always somebody in the kitchen. Just a little uh, aside. Uh, what does guacamole do? All right, guacamole. Um, like you said, uh, it's unfortunate uh, the person who is supposed to handle the restaurant, Mr. Apier, he called me today. Um, his uh, younger brother passed away in Cameroon, and uh, he's been very busy on the line. I put his name there. He was supposed to be here to shed light on the food, ah. uh, the different food. He's done a lot of uh, hotel uh, telling before. He's done his work with uh, IHOP, with uh, in, uh, with. Um, Holiday in so many other people uh, hotels, so I'm incorporating him now into into the, uh, in, in, uh, into the, the, the kitchen uh, section. He 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 met me one year ago that uh, look, we are wasting our, our, our time because our afternoon our mornings are not used, our afternoons are not used. 
because the type of menu we have is heavy, heavy, heavy menu, which is only for uh, dinner. You know, most African food is heavy, and most of the, so he said we could do all those other things that he, he made, he gave me, to put them in a the plan. Um, and he, since one year, I didn't call him back. I said, look, I, I'd like to take you in, but my kitchen is so small, I don't have a space for. You no, know, that can take you know varieties of things. Storage is there's no refrigerator, or enough refrigeration. So he didn't. Uh, with the, I don't. I didn't put him until when I got this uh, potential of expanding. That I called him. Okay, this is the opportunity. Come, let's work together. Bring your ideas. Let's work together and improve our kitchen and make uh, make sure. We okay, have so some of the some of the food items that are things that are you're planning to do. Yeah, the food items are some of the yes. Some of the food items I want that we include if uh, we can have better kitchen facilities. And, yeah. and do you offer entertainment in your restaurant? Yeah, um, during weekends um, we, uh, you know, patrons come to eat. They, uh, you know, we have you know music back that we, you know, African music. You know, people like to listen to some some dance and so on. And um, I have an enterprise license for that, which allows that. Okay, um, yeah. I think um, the difficulty that I have with this, and, I, and I've seen it with some other places in Tacoma Park, as we've discussed the same uh, subject, is um, when I think about a restaurant, I think about a place to come in and sit down and eat with the family and, and uh, have a good time and then uh, go home. And I think what you're describing is a little bit more than that. It's more of a uh, uh, a nightclub uh, kind of environment. I will, I will not put it. Yeah, sorry, to, I will not put it that way because um, um, we go actually in a culture. Most people they like they will always want to you know dance to any music they list uh -huh. in a culture. So when it comes even if they, even if there's no place to dance. Even they will stand up around uh, where they are sitting and you know, uh, you know, up, uh, you know, dance to the music they listen, and that is part of our business because uh, without which I tell you you will not have any customer come your place. The other places they will want to go because at least they can entertain themselves when they go there. It's not just eating outside that matters to them. It's not, uh, we, we don't have the tradition of going to eat outside. Uh, the, the tradition, most people cook home at home. Uh, if anybody in an African tradition is going out, he knows when he goes out, he will eat, he will have a, a, a beer, and then he will you know, entertain himself, and then he will go back home, relax. That's how it, it operates. Would you be uh, willing to maybe change the hours of service for liquor? To uh, say stop serving liquor at 11 p.m. Uh, instead of the early morning hours, if that was to uh, gain the support of this council, well, um, um, that would be a, a very interesting thing to do. But it would be it would be good if I have folks like you come to my restaurant so that you can come and help patronize me, and then I'll be able to work very well with, with that uh, type of schedule because uh, Africans, most of them don't go out early. They, they go out maybe 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, you know. Um, that will explain why in the afternoon you don't see people in my restaurant. You don't see people. I can't go to Kajam on the street. I'm trying hard with this type of uh, activity. I'm trying hard to see if I could encourage people to come early by having, you know, food that can encourage other people apart from Africans to come early. Uh, if they do that, and I have a good, good, uh, you know, I could have business in the morning and in the evening, and it's doing well. Uh, I wouldn't mind, you know, you know, uh, by two o'clock, you know, closing up and going home. Uh, I know I have money to have to pay my rent, uh, pay the workers, and all of that. Yeah. But like I said, is. Right now, I thank you for your, uh, like I say, your attention to this and your attention to the, some of the concerns that Chief Rikuchi has brought to you. Uh, you seem to really be trying. Um, and I uh, I think the, that if you... I'm skeptical that this is going to gain the, the support of the council at this time. Uh, but 
maybe if you keep that flexibility and, and think about how we could reach a compromise in the future, you, you might be more successful. Councilmember Snipper. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I don't have any special contributions. I do want to um, thank you for coming and putting together this uh, presentation. Um, I support the restaurant, would love to see it succeed. I've heard the food is good, actually, from those who have been there. I have not been there. I also think uh, that these problems are solvable <clears throat> that you've had. Um, I, I do think they require the things that you have proposed, um, but they need to be actively pursued. Um, people want to have fun, and they want to enjoy themselves, and um, but they also want it to be a, a safe and good and entertaining environment. Uh, some of the problems that have occurred are, are sort of not in that spirit. Um, and as the chief indicated, um, you have not had any calls in the last uh, little while, which I think is a great sign of your efforts to address these issues. Um, I would actually, <coughs> unlike my, some of my fellow council members, I would support um, giving you approval um, uh, with the proviso that the city is very active in preventing problems. And if it were to be approved and you did the expansion and you still had problems, then the city would actually be very active in dealing with those. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll, uh, I'll stop here. Yeah. Councilman Robinson. Hi. Um, how loud is the music at night? I, I, I kind of look to you and to yeah. Chief Okuchi. Uh, that hasn't been an issue. That has not been an issue. Okay. Um, is it live music or is it a DJ kind of music? It's, it's DJ. Uh, DJ kind of music. And I saw a picture in here of a park police. It says park police on the name of it. Yes, sir. Now, is that the is that the Prince George's County Park Police, or is it a different firm that um, calls itself Park Police? No, I, I wouldn't say it's Prince George County. Prince, Prince George County. I, I didn't see any Prince George's logo on it. Um, but um, it's, it's a Park Police. I, um, I tried to make my inquiries. They say. Um, before I even go to that level, I've uh, asked uh, some of the police officers here. I've been talked to the chief. Asked, apart from Chakma police, uh, who, which other police can I get? Because uh, if, I, uh, if the Chakma police are so busy, um, I wouldn't want to put more pressure on them. I would like to at least look somewhere to get at least the police. Uh, okay, so uh, let me see if I understand you. Um, you are willing to to have other security in the uh, for your premises. Correct. Okay, that's. I was just trying to get a clear clarity on that. Yeah. Um, there are two back doors in one picture. Does that does those represent the two, the two adjacent picture. places? And they both would open. Will Will you Would you in your plans break down the wall so that it was all one space? Uh, actually, the wall will be, the wall be, will be open and then have pillars midway. I see. And then there will still be two exits. I see. Two exits behind. So it would be open in, inside, yeah, but there would be two exits. Two exits behind okay. and two exits in front. So okay. that you increase the exits for to, to be four instead of and, just two. Okay. And um, I know that restrooms and kitchens can be very expensive to build. Yes, sir. Have you priced that out so you know how much it would cost in order to build these? Yeah. Um, I've talked with uh, one one of the... One contractor who did the work for one of my neighbors. So mm -hmm. yeah, he told me, um, you want to know what the price he told me? Well, I don't know if I want you to say it. You I don't, don't know. I don't, he, he I don't know me, that you need to he, say it right what now. He told me, what he told me is, uh, I told him, okay, at that level, I, I, I can, with, with a couple of months, I can, I can uh, put up some money and then. I guess, yeah, I, I guess what I'm really saying is. Yeah. You're aware that it's, it's expensive, yes. and you have a budget that would yes, yes, that would make yes. you would, you feel comfortable that, paying for the expansion over time. Yeah, I, I I know it's like yeah, 
I know that it will cost me, but I'm willing to put in that investment. So, you know, in order to have a, a peaceful business, a yeah. meaningful business. And the, the expanded kitchen would, yes. would allow you to, to okay. use, yeah. to expand your menu. Yeah, right? actually, those are my two areas of concern. I, I might have a couple of seats added so that people can sit, but the kitchen and the restroom uh, and the restrooms that you're anticipating building would be downstairs so yeah, there would be a stairway uh, down there yeah, and a stairway a big back. stairway down and, and the stairway's big enough it's big, okay big enough that. it's big enough the, that's why the architect he's the one who proposed yeah. to me that we could get more room down because it's a big basement and I have yeah. two of them one I'm using as a storage uh -huh. and the other they said uh, I could use it that okay uh, that. thank you very much yes. um, um, I don't know that we're doing a kind of polling right now, but um, I'm pretty open to this as well. Councilmember, uh, thank you for coming before us. Thank, thank you for uh, opening your business in Tacoma Park. I'm sorry I haven't been there. Thank you so much. I actually very much enjoy Cameroonian cuisine. I, I've been to Cameroon. I spent time in Yaoundé, Quebe, uh, and Limbe, and climb Mount Grant. Cameroon is a beautiful country. Um, my only complaint here on the menu is it seems like the new items, there's not enough new uh, Cameroonian items. It's more uh, Western uh, okay. items. Okay, yeah, you're right. You see, like I said, a lot of Africans, they tend to come out in the evening. So, um, but right now we have a mixed, mixed uh, crowd. It's not just Africans that kind. We have Americans too who come. Some of them want to eat something different. Not some, they don't want to eat something which they don't know entirely. So we could add that to be able to, you know, not to say variety is the spice of life. You know, when you have variety, you you, you can have, you, you make sure everybody has something yeah. rather than just, you know, stick on one thing that... Uh, but we're not really here to discuss the, yeah. the issue is not the, the cuisine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, so I, I just had a quick couple quick questions for the city staff and the chief, and then I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, chief, based on what you've seen, um, I know Councilmember McClay said that she didn't think you supported it, but I, w I just want to be clear. Based on what you've seen about the what's happened since March and the, what the uh, owners have described, are you where are you in your position about whether you would advise the council on this being a good idea or not to to uh, to say yay or nay? I know it's not our decision, but what we recommend to the Montgomery County. <coughs> I mean, what we have presently, what I sh showed you in facts, obviously we're, we opposed anything going forward. Uh, like I said, I've done this a lot of years. It's the first time I've seen somebody come up with a plan that does address every issue we raised. And uh, he, he came in and met us in a very positive atmosphere and manner, which is not the, what I'm used to seeing when we have these type of issues. Uh, I recommended to him that he talk to the neighborhood, like Councilman Woman Clay brought up, uh, and pointed out that this was very important to the council and to me to hear from the community, because ultimately we serve the community, and it's important that we have the community support. Um, if all these things go, go forward, and I explain the security and why we will not provide security in the parking lot, I explained that to him and offered him other agencies that would do this outside of Tacoma Park. The possibility for success is there, but we are going to continue to monitor it, and I would not have any hesitation. I think ultimately uh, it is obviously your decision to recommend to the Liquor Board. I'm not backing off the letter we've submitted. Yeah. Uh, I think it speaks for itself, and I think only actions will provide both the police department and the council and the community whether these changes that he recommends, which are very positive, will obviously result in not the problems. The record since March is very interesting to me because we have checked it very, it's one of my priorities that we keep an eye on what's going on there and there hasn't been any further problems. Uh, I'd be very negative up here tonight, but I, I, my recommendation is that uh, all the facts be observed and I would like to also, like Councilwoman Clay said, I'd like to hear from some of the neighbors to make sure that they are on board if what he's provided here is right. Um, and then what happens if, we, if the Liquor Board were to grant the license and then there's ongoing problems. How hard is it to reverse the decision or remove the license? It's or not hard at all. We just go right back to the board and in my dealings with the board for many years, if you provide evidence that there's obviously continuing problems, they're going to act very quickly. Which is different than some of the advice we've gotten from the city attorney related to Prince George's County, right? It, it operates very differently there in terms of how that hard is it is correct. to remove. I just wanted to... My, my dealings with the board, and it goes, well, now it would be almost 31 years, 
the board is just as active. It's one of the more active liquor control boards. They're very responsive to the police department when we provide them. Mm -hmm. They've worked very closely with us on this issue. So I find them very responsive, and they take action. And uh, I think this, even though he's brought a lot of positive things, this is going to weigh on them before they make a decision on expansion. Yeah. But I will say this is one of the better packages that I've ever seen in all my years in, yeah. in presenting it. I mean, it does. it is persuasive, and I know it's been persuasive here tonight. Yeah. Uh, but obviously the actions speak. We're going to continue to check it, and believe me, if there's a problem, I'm going to be bringing it back before the council and before the liquor board. Great. Um, so not in the presentation you gave tonight, but in a previous version we got, there was a... Uh, rough sketch of what the expansion plan looks like. Um, and I don't know if that's still accurate. In that expansion plan, there's actually a significant bar space. Um, and so I'm the thing that I was confused no. about is, is um, if, we're, if we're looking to increase to a 30-70 ratio of alcohol to food, why we would need an additional bar. Maybe that was a myth. The drawing is not what's intended. Okay. To I'm sorry about that. Um, actually, uh, the sketch you see is not really my my sketch. Uh, I, I maybe I give the idea some somehow to about it, but um, what we're doing is not really ex expanding uh, the the bar. Right, rather, we'll have one of those serve as a buffet, like uh, uh, we're trying to do. One of it will serve as a buffet buffet where we we'll have hot hot pot. Yeah. and people can come and serve, uh, serve themselves. So that is one of the things we are trying to do. But the, the, the thing is, the kitchen will make it twice the size, and the bathroom tw more than twice the size, and then um, where we have the, the floor where people dance will not change, we will have but more seats all, all over for people to sit. Uh, we will have tables and uh, tables for people to sit right. so that they can easily sit and they can easily you know, eat. Uh, some people buy their food and hold it uh, in their hands and eat. It's, it doesn't look uh, that good. So um, th this is kind of where I'm at. Um, I, I would uh, I would like to hear more from the actual residents. I would defer to, to Council Member Clay on uh, and follow her lead on how supportive she is, was of this because it's in her ward. Um, and and more defer to Council Member Robinson and Schultz because their wards are closer. I'd be interested in actually seeing you do the expansion. I imagine that the economics work for you to do the expansion without getting an expanded liquor license mm -hmm. and simply to serve alcohol with your existing license in the space that allows that. Mm -hmm. And then in six months or nine months, if you implement the stuff that you talk about and there's no problems, I think the council would be much more fully supportive uh, with, with the liquor board. Um, maybe the economics don't work, but I suspect based on the, the ki what you talked about in terms of the kitchen yeah, being based, bigger. Yeah, based based on what I'm saying, is for me, uh, is a real, um, I would, I'll be counting myself out of business if, if, because all along I've been talking to a landlord, look, I have a problem with space. I need to, you know, to, to give uh, uh, my customers a comfortable area to sit and eat and drink. So some of these problems that you see people standing outside, it's not because they want to stay outside, it's because they, they, they don't have room to stay in. And when they're outside, it becomes a nuisance. But if we have uh, enough space in, people will be, will, will be you know, you will, will love to stay inside rather than stay out. So we will eliminate, eliminate the problem of people, you know, lighting up out on the parking lot, because sometimes we stop people from entering. I have the police, I mean, the, the security officer, they have the counter. The count when it's uh, 80, 89, 85, 89, uh, when it's getting to 90, they stop. And when they stop them from coming in, they, stand, they stay at the parking lot, and that makes, makes it mm. a bit noisy. And then the fact that people crash into uh, each other in, inside it, inside the restaurant, is one of the main reasons why we have police calls. But once they do that, they start querying, and that leads to a fight. We've also had fight twice when two, two people go into the, the restroom. They're standing outside for long, and then this guy started hitting the door. Uh, hitting the door, he hit the door until the guy inside comes out and starts, why do you do that? And, uh, he, you know, he abused him, and that has led to, uh, you know, querying out to the side of fire and uh, had to go to the police. So it's, it's like, um, um, if I have to maintain what I have, 
I, I, my heart is say, okay, I don't want to be in business because uh, the customers will come and they will start having these issues and uh, the police I know, but if you, if you did the expansion but only serve alcohol in the section where you have the existing oh, okay. license. Okay. Council Member Wright, I, I'll double okay. check and find yeah. out what the, what the okay. rules are, if that's a possibility. So my general I'm perspective is if Council Member Clay, uh, uh, based on input from the residents, feels comfortable with going forward with the idea that we're going to watch it very closely and that the liquor, you know, we might come back, um, then I'd be supportive. But if she, I, I'm basically where she is on, on, on the position. Can I say what about the residents? Because, uh, like she mentioned, uh, uh, when I went back, I, I had to talk to, when I said meet the neighbors, it meant those who are selling, those who are in the shopping center as tenants, and those who are of the shopping center. From my presentation, you see that on, on, on the front, all are shopping centers. All those people, uh, they are not residential. On my left, I don't know, no, but, but the issue is like in one of the, I read the police reports. One of the police reports, an individual ends up at Elm and Ethan Allen. Mm -hmm. That's a residential neighborhood. There's, there's houses, uh, there's a little apartment complex there. So these, the nature of these types of issues don't just affect the things that are in immediate proximity or, or that you could, you know, throw a baseball to or something like that. Mm -hmm. They spread out. And in the, in the police report, it's very clear that when the incident happens, the person's fleeing from the police and ends, ends up over in the residential neighborhood. So that's why I think there needs to be some discussion with the, the, the residents beyond kind of the people who are contiguous or immediate. Okay. Yeah, I, I was just talking on that because I didn't limit myself uh, to those who are in the, in the shopping center. I went to the residents who were on my right, on my left, and I spoke to them. And uh, well, they they told me where well, they don't see any. Uh, they, they have their their, their, their address there and their accord. And then behind me, uh, actually behind me is the forest. Actually, then on on my right, if you are behind, there's uh, the residential complex which is there. I talked to a few people there, and uh, just to say that I try also to reach out to the to the residents to you know have a feedback to uh, from them what I'm doing. So far, um, I think all of them are. But it might be better for um, their for feedback to come to the council member yeah. because obviously, I don't if you go and say, "Hey, can I support you? We do smart right business." People are just going to feel uncomfortable, even if they don't. They may not say, okay. "No way!" Right? So I think you should just let us deal with the aspect of whether yeah, what, I'm, what the, I'm, I'm for that, that the neighbors feel. Yes, Councilmember Schultz. Hi, and thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, sir. Uh, I know that uh, starting a restaurant and making an excess is a challenge in the best of circumstances. So I have a, some questions that haven't been asked yet that mm -hmm. I'd like to ask you about. Um, do you, but before opening this restaurant, had you ever operated a restaurant before? Uh, I've, I've done that, but not in the United States. I've done that uh, when I was in Cameroon. In Cameroon? Yeah, I, I run a restaurant. I had my own restaurant mm -hmm. uh, before coming here. Yeah, about how, how many years ago? Um, I mean, how many years or... Did, did you ha how long ago was it that you okay. had a restaurant in Cameroon? Um, it's about eight years ago. Eight? Yeah, because I've been in this country for about five, six years. And and how how long has this uh, come to Africa? How long have you? When did it open? It's two years. It's two, years two, it's two years ago. Okay. Um, do you do you have a signed lease? Signed. Do you have a lease? Yes. yes. Um, how many years does that run? Five years. Nine. Five. Five. Five, five, five years. Renewable. Okay, so you've got maybe two years already and three more to go. No, I just had the lease. Re, uh, renewed for another five years. This June okay. for both for both uh, both um, um, for both, both shops, okay. both shop. The new shop I is, I have the lease already okay. for the new so shop. So you you have a signed lease on the new space. Yes, for I, five years, and, uh, same as the one for the existing space. Yes. Okay. Um, what, one of my concerns is is that I worry that. You may not have a good handle on what it's going to cost to do what you want to do. Uh, I, I have a background in commercial lending. I've done a lot of lending to restaurants, okay. and I know what it, how complicated it is. 
Um, the bathrooms, which have to meet uh, ADA standards, are extremely expensive. Particularly, you know, in commercial settings, are even more expensive than in in private homes. Uh, rest uh, kitchens are extremely expensive, particularly because you have to have hoods and ex proper exhaust uh, and fire. Uh, fire suppression controls, as well as all the other stuff that the health department yes. re re requires. If you're going to have bathrooms in the in the lower level, then you're going to have to have an exit. From there's going to be an, a way to get out of that basement besides going upstairs, because the fire department, fire marshals, going to require you to have an extra exit so that people who are using the restrooms in the basement have a way of getting out of the building safely, okay. which is going to be expensive. Um, so I, I, I make that comment not to discourage you, because it's not really not my business to say that, you know, to discourage you or to give you encouragement. It's just to point out that it can be a real challenge and, and to encourage you to make sure that you have an architect not just a contractor, because to have a contractor come in and tell you that he can do build X, Y, and Z doesn't mean that it's going to be built to code. Yes, sir. Or it's going to be designed properly to be safe to meet the Montgomery County health regulations or the fire department regulations and all that. You really need to have an architect. Architects cost money, but you get what you pay for. Contractors, good ones, can build from what the architect draws. Um, one of the things I'd like to point out is that one of the great things about living in this, living where we do, in, in, in Tacoma Park and the surrounding areas, there's lots of restaurants that have menus that are unique to the particular country from where that person comes. Yes. And that's what makes them so great. And I, so that way I encourage you to, to continue in that, in that way. But just to point out that a lot of these restaurants uh, are very successful in, in still serving their native kind of foods and cuisine, but managing to do it in a way that is appealing to the people that live in the community, where it's quiet, it's safe, it's clean. Uh, so just because it's a Cameroonian style restaurant. It has nothing to do with the, the control that you have. And what I see there, unfortunately, is that you're trying to do too much in too small a space. You're trying to serve food, good quality food. You're serving alcoholic beverages. You're providing DJ music. You want to make space for people to dance. You have people who want to smoke because that's what, like, what they want to do. And of course, they have to do that outside since the law keeps, you know, they can't do it on the inside. Okay. Uh, and and you're, you've got, it's too crowded. Your restroom's not big enough to handle it. And, and the kitchen's not big enough. You yourself saying that it's just, you can't, you have people who leave because they can't yeah. wait long yeah. enough to, to, to get the food. That's correct. That just, it's a pretty simple equation. You're trying to do too much in too little space. Your solution, of course, is to expand. Very logical to me that you would want to expand. But it's hard to support an, to an expansion when you haven't demonstrated your ability to run the business in the space that you already have without getting into problems. I mean, you, for example, a minute ago you said, well, you get too many people coming which is kind of nice if you're in business because you want to have lots of people. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to have people standing in line waiting. But if they're just going to congregate around the front of the building and smoke and then start getting into fighting and pushing and shoving, then that, there's something wrong there. You know? And I don't know what it is. It's not my problem to solve. That's for you to figure out. So it, it's a concern for me to sort of encourage you in other words, it's a problem for me to try to, to sort of say, yeah, I support your expansion when you're not able to run the restaurant in the small spaces. It is. It's much easier 
for me, if you were already running a, a restaurant and it was doing really, really well, as many of them are around here, up and down New Hampshire Avenue and University Boulevard and, and in Silver Spring, there's all kinds of these, these small little uh, ethnic, as you call them, restaurants that are very successful. And they managed to do that well without creating disturbances on the outside. So I'm in kind of inclined to think that, you know, to say go ahead and expand, you've already got the lease, you've already got apparently the money you need in order to, to do the expansion, but to hold, but to, so you go ahead and do that. But I, I'm kind of reluctant, based on what I know so far, uh, underlined so far, uh, to, to support more a larger a liquor license for that additional space. Now, the, the, uh, I agree with uh, 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 Council Member Clay that we have to hear what residents nearby are, have to say, and we'll find that out next week, I think is, is what we're planning to do. Mm -hmm. Is that not right? Yes. Um, but in the meantime, I'd like to come over and visit and look at it because Fred and I are going to go together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, in my experience, my, my door is open. I'm, I, I'm, in, you know, in my personal experience as a banker lending to businesses, is that talking about a business and seeing it, you know, where you can just say, "Oh, okay, now I see what you're talking about." World of difference, and, I, and I'd like to come over and look at it and, and sort of just see see what you got. I appreciate the opportunity to do that and can do it any time that's convenient for for you and your and your uh, and the people that work for you. So I'm I'm gonna reserve my opinion. I'm not gonna tell you today because I just don't know. I've made up my mind what I'm gonna recommend. But those are some of the concerns. this is just so you know where I'm coming from, what my concerns are and that sort of thing. Okay? Thank you. And I'll try and run through any questions or concerns I've got fairly quickly. Um, one question I've got that the deputy city manager might have the answer to. Um, the 70-30 the food alcohol percentage, is that a requirement of a Class B? No, it's not. It's not. Okay. And is there, and for, is there any requirement of a Class B for any of, that percent, any of those percentages? Is there anything now that you're required to do? I don't think so. I will double check. Um, it's, you know, this isn't the same kind of thing as uh, as a variety of other places. Right. The Class B is a pretty open category. Okay. Um, but I think that the 7030 is just more of a rule of thumb than than any requirement. Yeah. Okay. I will double check and see if there's any other requirements there. Yeah, just since, since it was brought up, I wanted to make sure what the current requirement is and if there would be, you know, any... So it's an expansion of a, of a current B license. It would still be a B license, but it would be for the... Double a larger space. space. Okay. Um, I would also like to hear from the residential neighbors, um, and you characterize as behind you as woods, but I know behind those woods there are apartments, condos. I'm not sure what they are. I think they're condos. Alford, isn't it? Alford that's behind them. No, there's no. there's 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 an address that's Ethan Allen that the driveway runs oh, right back to. Yeah. Four seven one. Right. Okay. Um, and so I think they're the closest neighbors. There's also the townhouses across uh, 410, and there's right. also the houses houses down on the other end of the parking lot. Right. I think it'll be interesting to see. Um, you know, one of the things that um, the applicant has going for him really is that this is one of the few locations that's not immediately butting up to residences. Um, there are the folks in the back behind the parking lot. Um, yeah. But, um, you know, we've not received noise complaints and that kind of thing as we would traditionally do if it was a little closer. Okay. Because um, I, I was on the council and I do remember the history with Julissa nightclub that was in the building that I think has since burned right down uh, at the other end of that row uh, and some of the difficulties with that and the neighbors were particularly upset about that. At the time, that was in Prince George's County, mm -hmm. uh, and I think, as the chief notes, that can make a difference in the response. Um, I understand from what you've presented that it can be that 
in many ways the, the salvation of what you're trying to do can be the additional space because it's so hard to do what you need to do given the smaller space. And so I would hate to be in the position of saying, uh, no, I don't support it, and therefore you're going to have to do what you're doing in a smaller space, and that makes it extremely difficult to do. I appreciate the, uh, the efforts you've made in addressing this and the fact that the chief said that this is a, one of the better presentations he's seen and one of the better efforts to address the concerns. And we do have the, uh, the history from March to now that there have been no complaints, so that uh, makes me hopeful that uh, you're on the right track. Um, it's, it's also interesting, my understanding is that, is this Mr. Spanos? Yes. Who's, who's here? Um, I'm, gl I'm glad to see you here uh, in support of this. My sense of the history of the city's dealing with that property has been that it's been very difficult to deal with uh, what I assume to be another generation of the same family in dealing with the management of that property. So I'm glad to see that uh, you have the support of your landlord. Um, I would be very interested to see what the responses are that we might get at a public hearing next week. Uh, to hear what uh, neighbors have to say. Uh, I'm withholding judgment at this point. In terms of uh, coming up with a draft resolution, do you want me to write it as if you're supporting, as if you're opposing, or if you, as if you're taking no action for the purposes of the public discussion? For the purposes of the public discussion. Sense of that? My, my sense is that there are people who are disposed to think positively about it. There are some who are opposed and there are some who are in the middle and I'm not sure we have uh, consensus yeah. about no consensus. What, what that's going to be. So I guess my sense is that given that, maybe the thing to do is to write it for the purpose of the public hearing as saying no position, which is a change from the previous letter, which says, well, now we're considering what do you think? Is that something that seems like a reasonable approach to take? Can, can yeah. we? Yeah. I guess if, if I had to suggest something, I would suggest being in support of it for the purposes of the public hearing, because if you, otherwise you may get people saying, well, I don't care if it's no position. <laughs> I, I mean, I think you should either say one, a, a positive right. or an mm -hmm. a, a, a approve or an oppose, so you have people actually respond to that, and even I, though you may end up taking no position. And, and I guess maybe if, if we want to hear the, if, if we expect that there may be concerns, we would probably elicit those concerns if we wrote it as support. Yeah, but I, I have to say I'm not wild about using that process to rile people up to get them in. Um, I don't want to agitate people to get them to come and, and speak about it. I think that I'd, I'd rather even spend some time on Saturday with uh, some flyers and just go door to door in in that area to make sure that people know and put it out on the listserv. Um, and Something that's explanatory of where we are? Yeah, so that they, I mean, they need to take responsibility for themselves. If they have an opinion on it, they need to come out. And I, I don't want them to ignore it because they think that we're not going to do anything or get all riled up and come out opposed to it because they think that we've pre predetermine the outcome. So um, I guess I get maybe the, the, I don't see a lot of point in taking no action because we've already asked the, the alcohol control board not, not to act on it. And I think we have a, we have the letter from the police chief that stands. It might be better to be prepared for a positive response or a negative response, but maybe not no response. Because I feel like I'm either, I, I don't feel like I'm, we have no response. And we have it, one or the other. I just don't know what that response is. In many other cases, it's the council member for the ward in which something is located that suggests the language to be put forward if you have a preference. Um, because you have to put it in the, you, you have to put it in the pack. You have to put the resolution in the packet it's before like we can vote concerning. on it. The city clerk and I were just wondering, yes. is, there, is it necessary for the council to actually have a resolution next week, or could the council schedule a brief period of time next week after Council Member Clay has a chance to talk to her constituents? 
I don't know. I don't. I, to me, it's just a notice question. We have we have another. We have two. How many meetings do we have after that? One or two? Two. 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 Um, I, I don't. I don't want to put out a, a yay or a, a nay on it at this point. Isn't it a public hearing just to more information gathering? Yeah. Well, or, 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 we, or do you want to have? Do we need to do the hearing next next week? Can we do it the following week? Well, I, I think we should do the. I'd rather do the hearing. Go ahead and do it next okay. week, and then mm -hmm. if we could do the resolution following that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Atte, what they're suggesting then is that you would come back next Monday as well as an additional mon following Monday or the, or the week after that for a decision. Are you available on all those days? I can make myself available. This is very okay. important to me. Okay. Yeah, I can okay. Imagine. Yeah. So, we'll, so we'll have a public hearing next week for comment and then go from there on a resolution. Hey, one more. Yes, item. go ahead. Um, can we find out by next week kind of more specifics about what happens if we approve the license and then we have other we have you know significant issues around it? What's that yes, really I was going like? Yes, I'm going to find that out. Okay, no, to you. And then um, if other council members are interested in going on a field trip, I've actually been to the um, site before, but not since the change of ownership. So um, uh, I I go on a field trip with other council members. Okay. It looks like we'll have a bunch. <laughs> can, I, can I make one clarification? Yes. Uh, in case you have a problem with it. The 70 to 30 percent alcohol ratio is not an official ratio. It's my objective right. that this is right. what I would like to attend. Understood. Yeah. Uh, the, the regulation is when you start a uh, Class B license, your first year, you got to have a 50 to 50 alcohol uh, uh, food ratio. You submit um, a report, monthly report for one year. After one year, if it has fight, you, you don't have to submit that report again. They know you've been doing the right thing. Okay. Like uh, I said, this is an objective that I put. It's not uh, an official. The official thing for one, the first year is 50-50. Okay. Okay. That's helpful. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Do you have a question? No, Mayor Williams, I just uh, wonder if I could, uh, at this time, uh, remind the community that the fireworks are about to start at 9.30, and I know that it's uh, a late change, and so I encourage them to go to the Tacoma Park Middle School on Piney Branch Road to see the fireworks display at 9.30. And we're glad that that fireworks display is there and not in this room. <laughs> and that's true, so far. Thanks Thank very much. Sir. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure meeting you before. Thank you. You're welcome. We will uh, move to our special session, and we have a resolution authorizing submission of uh, legislative action requests. Yes, yeah, so um, I have heard from the Maryland Municipal League that we are allowed to only issue um, request three LARs, and there's four paragraphs here. Um, so there. You can remove one or more of them, but we're only allowed to submit three uh, legislative action requests. The four that are before you, um, one has to do, it always has to do with increasing revenues for municipalities, this time um, putting a focus on municipal tax duplication. Uh, one of the things that was um, suggested in the discussion that we had a couple weeks ago um, was, was looking at kind of the um, doing a fiscal analysis of the impact of um, the existing tax duplication laws. And, and uh, Councilmember Robinson, I tried to take from your comments some some request on this, but I think it's pretty flexible as well. If there's, um, it's clearly you know our intention, and I think people know it's our intention to look at every different way of increasing revenues and and fa having fair tax duplication requirements. Um, the, the, uh, that first item is the only one that's very specific to municipalities of the four legislative action requests. Uh, the second one is to work with county and state officials to support passage of legislation to remove the exemption from personal property taxes for financial institutions. Uh, I know that there is some commitment to expand that from, the, from this past session's 
um, legislation uh, in terms of the amount of support that it gets through a number of co-sponsors. We want more co-sponsors uh, to put this forward. Uh, this hack actually helps all municipalities, counties, and the state government. So it, it's not specific to municipalities. Uh, the third item has to do with a, a variety of our concerns related to utility companies. Uh, one is um, minimizing the number and duration of electrical out outages, which is something that is being dealt with uh, by numerous um, interested parties. Um, another is to encourage the undergrounding of wires when road, when road construction is planned, requiring rapid and high quality road restoration after utility cuts are made in roadways. Uh, dealing with council member Wright's request about removing old utility poles within a short amount of time when new poles are installed or not otherwise needed. And removing deadlines from polls promptly when cable or other utility service is discontinued. This latter um, item um, is a particular concern of our public works department that responds to down lines, and there's no sense about what the line goes to, who to call, and what to do about it. And uh, generally, this is something where somebody switched from one cable service to another, and the old cable company doesn't come and pick up the line. Uh, and the fourth item um, is to um, encourage more flexibility in um, standards for state highway signs um, that are more appropriate to the lower speeds and the narrow right-of-way widths found in Tacoma Park and in many communities. Um, on this last one, there has been some modification in some of the national standards. Um, I'm not sure that it fully addresses uh, what our needs are, but. Um, there is interest in, in looking into some of the, the changes that the um, national standards have done. And it is one of the items that we were planning on working with State Highway as part of the ML and 410 discussions. And it's one of the priorities we've put through for that. So I'm looking for your support of this resolution, minus one, at least one of the uh, resolution items. And, and I've just got um, two questions on these real quick on the on the second one on the uh, personal property tax for financial institutions yes my recollection is that that's on particular aspects that, it, that it's more finely grained than that that it's not the whole thing that it's the, the it was for the particular parts of it and if we go forward with that one I think I'd like to get just a little bit more detail in there on that one okay to to make sure that we say accurately what it is. Okay. I, I took it from one of the official statements, but I will look more carefully about that. Um, yeah. Is that something that I can just kind of modify as, as, yeah. I, as I double check the yes. language of the legislation? Um, and, and the other one on the, uh, on the last one on the uh, signs on state highways, um, the thought I had as you were speaking was that it, it's possible that it may be uh, if if we need to uh, fine tune that one to make it more municipality oriented, if that seems advisable, um, I can't think of the phrase right now. But there are uh, designated uh, areas within the state which include all municipalities, the priority zones, priority areas, funding areas, or whatever whatever they're called, right. and that it might be good to include that language in this to say that that's where it needs to be focused, and that would include all municipalities. Uh, Councilmember Snipper. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's, you know, really hard to pick, <laughs> pick three. So I guess my question is, um, is there one that's likely to go ahead, more, more likely to go ahead in the absence of, you know, our urging one of these? In other words, are we piling on with, with one and it's going to go ahead without us? I think the one related to the financial institutions and personal property taxes is likely to, to go forward in, in one way or the other. There's a, and there's there's already been work at identifying a sponsor for that who is the chair of the subcommittee that would hear it. So maybe we, my thought was maybe we don't need to 
propose that one uh, since it's more likely to go ahead anyway. And just, just also a clarification. These are just for those things that we put forward to the Maryland Municipal right. League. We can still simply, we can still certainly yes. champion them as, as individual right. legislation. It's just that, for example, the utility one, um, you know, I'd really like to see that, and um, particularly with the specific specificity that we have mm -hmm. in it. Yeah, I think a number of the items in the one related to utilities are uh, some of the items are often overlooked. People right. are just looking at the reliability, right. but there's all these other things that personally cause us some right. grief. Exactly. The same thing with the highway sign, same kind of mm -hmm. issue. Councilmember Robinson. Uh, thanks for putting these together. And I like the specificity too. And I'm with you on. Um, Although the personal property taxes for financial institutions is a good one, but if it's if it's being pursued, if we have other ways to pursue it, then that would be the one I think I would drop out. And I, I like the state highway signs one because it could apply to lots of places, but it's particularly pertinent to our mm -hmm. our location. Um, so I'm in favor of those three. Councilor Reply. I think it's important to push the utility reliability. Um, that's a significant issue that affects all of us in so many ways. And I think that it's high time we started talking about undergrounding the utilities as we um, do the roadway cuts. Um, and the other thing I'm going to say is that I think the state highway signage is worth pursuing at the Maryland Municipal League level. I think that's a good one. I like those two, those two that I would focus on. Councilor Robert Schultz. Um, I think I just want to agree with uh, what's been said by <laughs> Councilmember Clay and uh, Councilmember Robinson and, uh, and, and so forth. Um, I think these three that are we're talking about here, leaving out the one for financial institutions, have tr good pertinence to uh, our city. Uh, I'm, I th the idea of doing something about these abandoned utility poles or abandoned wires, uh, th there are several wires uh, like that uh, right, right in front of my house. Um, and uh, we called the utility company and they all just, like cable companies, and said, it's not ours. And so, uh, I don't know, they got somebody to come out there and just wrap the wire around the the, tele the uh, utility pole, uh, or, or make a big circle loop of it and hang it up on one of the little uh, nails that's sticking out that the uh, that the people use to climb up, and there it's just dangling in a big loop. It looks like uh, looks ridiculous, and it just sort of shows to me that this whole idea of overhead utility lines in the face of all the technology, fiber optics, and and uh, GPS or you know, G3 and G4 technology and all this other stuff. So, you know, it's all this is heading for obsolescence pretty quickly. Fireworks. There we go. I hope they're on our side. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was something else. Never mind. I thought it was basketballs. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I had an upset stomach. I didn't know if I was <laughs> anyway, uh, I was just saying that th this business of all these poles that get in the way of sidewalks and other things, they're steadily destined for obsolescence. And I think this is a good time to begin to address getting this stuff buried and cleaned up because they look awful. Councilor Siemens. Thank you. Uh, like Council Member Schultz, I had an upset stomach until I heard the fireworks. <laughs> um, I agree with what's been said and, and uh, dropping the uh, financial institution one and going to the others. Thank you. And I'll, and, and I'll reluctantly go along since I testified on that uh, bill last year and worked with uh, some Tacoma Park residents to... Uh, move this forward, I will continue to uh, 
make sure that that goes forward. We'll get you to testify again. It'll work. <laughs> I was assuming, Bruce, that as the chair of the legislative committee, you put other stuff in there besides the three that we uh, were putting in. That may be the case. <laughs> <laughs> but there are, there are processes I have to follow. Ah. Mayor, it related to the signs, um, in terms of mentioning priority funding areas, I, I can include that as part of the LAR paperwork, if okay, you like, and okay. not necessarily have to change the resolution. Okay. So, would somebody like to move the resolution without the well, fifth where it is? Moved by Councilmember or Siemens, seconded by somebody down at the end. Well, Clerk's well, choice. Nice. So, somebody. <laughs> um, any further discussion? Any public comment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. That passes. Thank you. And let's do the consent agenda and then take a short break to listen to the fireworks. Anybody want to move the consent agenda? Move. Move. Second. All those in favor, please say Oh, sorry, roll call. Roll call. Please call a roll. Mayor Williams. Aye. Councilmember Wright. Aye. Councilmember Clay. Aye. Councilmember Robinson. Aye. Councilmember Siemens. Aye. Councilmember Silver. Aye. Councilmember Schultz. Aye. The ayes have it. We'll take a short break and we'll be back for our work session discussion on our interaction with city committees. So we can go out and watch We can always stick our head out the door and see if we can see anything. Now that we've gotten to enjoy the delayed fireworks, we'll get to our last work session item. I don't know. Anybody want to say anything to introduce? City Clerk. Sure. Um, so we provided the council with some basic information about the various committees and um, included a, a chart, uh, a table that shows how often the committees generally report and when they've last reported. Um, on the cover sheet we included, um, although this is certainly a council directed agenda item, uh, the staff did provide a few questions that we thought it would be helpful if you would consider at some point in your discussions. Um, and then finally, there are uh, a few issues related to some specific committees that uh, the staff would find it helpful if the council would um, think about how to deal with them. And those are the Committee on the Environment, the Free Burma Committee, the Safe Roadways Committee, and the Noise Control Board. And, and um, I could provide additional information on that if you'd like, but uh, but this is uh, was really the uh, council's discussion this evening. Um, maybe a good way to approach this, given the hour, given the fact that we're going to have a uh, continued discussion on this at least next week and potentially after that, um, might be to kind of look at the overall issue if there are people who want to put particular uh, additional aspects of this on the table uh, we may we may or may not get to some of these particular questions tonight and if we do I would suggest that we might get to some that are kind of more procedural like maybe some of the uh, groups that are no longer active and what we might want to do with them so that we have a chance to uh, continue to get feedback from uh, committees and task forces uh, for our continued discussion. People want to kind of get at this generally, say what concerns are, what issues are, and put things on the table. That seemed like a good way to go. Yep. I don't see any heads vigorously shaking no, so uh, maybe we'll uh, take that approach and I didn't pay any attention to the order these lights came on in, so I'm... Um, Just start at one end and go to the other. It was seven, eight, two, six. <laughs> 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 All right, Councilmember Clay. 
Um, well, I'm glad that we're taking this up, and I imagine that um, it's going to be somewhat of a continuing discussion. Um, I wanted to weigh in on a couple of the things that uh, the city clerk has asked us to deal with now, though. Um, I want to say that um, I think that some of the committees are sort of happily moving along with their charges and have good relationships with the city staff that they work with, and that all, I think, functions very well in the sense that they're advisory and, and serve as resources to the, to the city staff. And, and we have other committees that I think have more, uh, have need for more direction from the council and more uh, connection. And I think those tend to be a little bit more in the, in the task force range and um, in, in, the kitty, in the committees that we've set up to identify specific issues that aren't necessarily ongoing issues that are very time-based issues and so we should probably um, look at those different those those groups differently um, I think that um, in terms of the issues about the um, committees that we need to do something something with now um, I think that given that the folks on the Free Burma Committee have said that they're not opposed to repealing the section of the city code related to that committee, that it might be time to let that go, um, which isn't to say that we couldn't continue to work on those issues as a city in other ways, but maybe a city committee just isn't. I don't see how a city committee is necessarily the effective way to do that. Um, I don't know what to do about the Safe Roadways Committee. I guess my suggestion there is that I would like to put together the, a task force around the livability issues, and I think that we should put the, um, the Safe Roadways types of issues at, uh, into that task force to see where we would want to go with that and um, what the short-term things are that we could do in that area and then what are the long-term things and, and ask the task force essentially, you know, do what kinds of committee configurations, if any, would we see coming out of the livability issues? Because I think that those are those are livability issues. So that's, I guess, that's what I would do with that one. Um, I think that we definitely have to have a bigger discussion on the noise control issues. I think residents are residents are frustrated that when they things are happening that they perceive are noise issues, that there's not a great there's not a great way to get uh, action on it, if you will. Um, the, the police response sometimes in the media in the media is is adequate, and sometimes it's not. And um, I think we need a, probably a bigger discussion about how to effectively deal with noise issues in the city. Um, and then the last one, uh, or the first one in this instance, the committee on the environment. Um, I'm not interested in moving on with the Committee on the Environment at this time because I think that we need to look at what comes out of the activities that we have um, relative to the sustainability um, actions that we've, we've funded some consultancy activities this year around the sustainability issues and I don't think we've determined yet whether or not we want to split out into um, smaller actionable groups on things like um, the climate change versus the um, you know the waste stream activities and those sorts of things um, and I guess uh, rather than a general committee at this point I'd like to see kind of more specific short-term actions um, I think you all received an email from uh, Joe Edgel tonight who's one of my constituents about some um, suggestions he and I have had uh, some good conversations about this, and I think all of his suggestions are, are very good. Yes, I agree. Um, and I think that one of the things that, that he and I talked about that I particularly um, would like to see happen is uh, more council involvement in selecting the chairs of the committees. And that's my comments for the moment. Mm -hmm. um, Councilmember Schultz. Thanks. Um, I'm not going to address the specific questions here that are raised on this blue sheet, 
just some general comments. The, the first thing is that it's difficult to generalize about all these committees because some of them have specific defined missions and they do them like uh, the Commission on Landlord Tenant Affairs, effect affectionately known as CULTA, or the Facade Advisory Board, which we heard from just a couple weeks ago, has you know uh, narrowly defined duties. They carry them out, uh, and they understand what their role is. But I think an awful lot of these committees, uh, more rather than the, the majority of them. Uh, I have challenges, as we heard tonight from uh, uh, Ann Hollander from the uh, Washington Adventist Hospital Land Use Committee, as we've heard from other committees, is that they don't understand what their relationship is to the city council. There's confusion as to uh, how they're supposed to what their role is vis-a-vis -vis the, the council, even though they are, the committees are statutory committees, they're defined in the city code. Um, and so there's, there's uh, confusion and frustration, as uh, Ms. Hollander eloquently described it. Um, in addition, this city is blessed with residents many of whom are experts in all kinds of different fields. Um, and yet, we hardly ever tap into any of that expertise. We, fo we formed the Environmental Task Force, and uh, that was helpful to pull out people, pull together people who are expert or have a lot of interest or knowledge in, in the field and, and, and can work on it. But uh, there's just an awful lot of resources in the community that are here. I mean, this is where, where we live. I mean, this is the, we don't. This is not the middle of Nebraska. Hey. Well, did I offend Nebraska? <laughs> she came from Nebraska. Oh, well, this is not the middle of Kansas. There you go. <laughs> oh, there's you know. lots of Kansans in Tacoma. Park. No, geez. Oklahoma. Come on, that's a good one. <laughs> Nobody's from and, Oklahoma. You know, Oklahoma. and so it's a very it's a very uh, heterogeneous community. Okay with all kinds of resource, personal resources here. Um, and we, we're, we're missing a va just a fabulous opportunity to use these people's energy and ideas and their minds in helping us um, make decisions uh, and, lead, and lead, lead the city. Um, and I just think that's crazy to, to not do, do that. I think we we don't know, we're, we're, we're not consistent on how staff, city staff, relates to some of these committees. Uh, some, there's a good staff staffing relationship, and others, it's more of a hands-off situation. Um, another issue I've seen is that when we appoint members to the committee, we simply ask them if they're interested on their application and why they're interested. And, and in some cases, people need to be a resident. Uh, so that becomes an important factor. In other cases, it's not an important factor. Um, we ask them whether or not they've ever attended a meeting of the committee they want to join. And in my experience, most of the time, the answer is no. And then we point them to the committee, and we don't ask them. After that, we never hear from them again. We, so we don't even so much as say to the person who is interested in a committee, well, do you know the mission statement? Or do you know what the work program is of that committee? And of course, the reason we don't is that a lot of these committees don't have missions, clear missions. Uh, and if you were to ask, go to that to the committee member, I speak from my experience, you might talk to 10 members of a committee and find that each person thinks that their idea of what the committee should be doing is the best idea. And so it's very difficult to sort of say, some, sometimes, not in all cases, what the committee is really trying to, to accomplish. And I've had committee members come to me 
and say they're frustrated because people join these committees, they come with ideas and an idea of what the committee is supposed to do, and they can't get their way, uh, so they quit. And that's not to anybody's benefit. So um, I just I think we really need to overhaul the way, and I, I put that blame on the city council. I think that the city council has fallen short. Um, I know that in the three, four years or so that I've served on the Public Safety Citizens Advisory Committee, as much time was spent in that committee arguing amongst ourselves as to what it was we were supposed to be doing and what it was we imagined the city council wanted us to do uh, as we did actually trying to, to accomplish something. Um, and one member of the Recreation Committee told me that he's been on the Recreation Committee for many years. That his term was is that he feels like the committee is simply chasing its tail most of the time. Um, so I'd like us to, uh, I hope we can approach this discussion in a way to think about how we can be, uh, ma manage these committees uh, in a much more efficient and effective way so that uh, they, they literally serve the, the, the city, uh, city uh, in, in the broadest sense of the word and they serve the city council and the people who sit on these committees and volunteer their time, uh, attend these meetings and feel like they're really making a difference and helping the, and helping the city to, to, to uh, function. So that's all I want to say at this point. Councilmember Robinson. Um, I'm kind of noting down thoughts I've had for a long time. I, I really came up through committees in Tacoma Park and um, spent a lot of my formative, I guess, political time in them. And some, in some instances, I had really rewarding experiences, and in other instances, I got really bent out of shape. And um, in some instances, I felt I had an opportunity to exhibit real leadership, and um, there were times when it could we could be very pragmatic, and um, there were times when democracy was a great element, and other times when it seemed to backfire. Um, as regards Ann Hollander, and or, or as regards the Washington Adventist. What's it called? Walla, Hospital Walla. Land Use Committee. I think that was a very was very instructive to me that we studied our relationship and considered our relationship with Washington Adventists. Um, and, and and then it, I was I was blindsided by how little we, at least I, was thinking about Waluk. Wa. Is that how we pronounce it? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, as, as, as we went along. And then when Ann first stood up, I went, oh, yeah, of course. And I had that in my mind, but I didn't feel that I was making the connection with them. So it, it rang true. Her, her, uh, her sensitivity rang true. Um, I guess other notes I have here that um, we ought to, I agree with, with you, Council Member Schultz, that we have to acknowledge that um, we have all this talent, and for me, there's this kind of we're on sort of an accelerated timeline of things to consider because the world's changing fast, and uh, whatever you think about climate change, I, I think it's real, and and communication has increased to the point where people know everything all the time, and um, uh, so we have to we need all the help we can get in in the kind of acknowledging acknowledging that and taking budgetary constraints seriously because they're not going to I don't think they're going to get much better or that, that our budgetary situation is going to get much better and we have to allow for people to consider kind of structural elements beyond our own considerations and um, so these kind of transitional issues where are we going I, you know maybe we could come up with a new generation of committees that include those those kinds of things um, I'm I'm uh, wondering, Councilmember Clay, about the choosing of chairs, how, how you would structure that or help structure that. I look forward to hearing more about that. Um, 
I'm not generally in, in favor of that because I don't feel like I feel, I feel like when committees get started, they we kind of want to launch them. But then I also acknowledge that we need to have a close communication, and we also don't want uh, uh, personality-driven committees that get themselves into corners that they can't get out of. So that's a very that's a very interesting point to bring up. Um, uh, I, I said at the beginning of the of the council meeting tonight, what came into my head, which has come in, into my head before, um, I know that repetition is something that people can become comfortable with. And uh, if we did a review, like as we're doing now on a yearly basis at the end of the middle of the summer or what have you, before we um, adjourned in August, uh, just as as we're doing now, maybe it's, maybe it's a good model. We sh maybe we should consider it. And then the committees can all know that we're going to do that review and make sure that they understand. And, and that would be a way to make sure they have a, uh, they know it's their, their time to review the relationship between the committee and, and us on the council. Um, that might help with some of the blindsiding accusations, whether they're true or not. Anyway, that's enough. Councilmember Snipper. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to try not to repeat what others have said. <laughs> um, I think for me, the most important um, issue is how to develop more regular two way communication with the committees. Um, and whether that's uh, reports in person or reports in writing. Um, uh, they don't have to be extensive reports. They can just be brief reports. Some of the committees um, have very episodic activities. <clears throat> um, I also think that the staff could do the report if the committee doesn't want to um, as a way of dealing with that issue. Um, I also agree that Tacoma Park has many experts, and um, I find that I end up talking to them about specific issues, and I rely on them for, I call it one-off advice, that is, um, you know, one-time things, uh, because m many of them have um, <coughs> long other long-term commitments and can't, the reason they don't serve on committees, they're already uh, doing a lot of activities. So I find it's easier to draw on them for um, either short periods or uh, just one or two sessions, and I wonder if we could develop a method to uh, do that for committees where they would uh, bring in uh, somebody for a specific issue to that committee and but not make them be a member and you know like for example on the environment um, the committee might be much smaller and call in um, somebody to work on waste issues or somebody else to work on air quality or someone else to work on you know some other livability thing and <clears throat> rather than having a long-term commitment um, and finally, I, too, um, support the recommendations that uh, Joe made. I think they're very thoughtful, Joe Edgel, and I agree with them in general. Thank you. And those he sent today, tonight? He tonight, did tonight. Yeah, sorry, during the meeting. Yeah, sorry, okay. during the meeting. So some of us haven't seen them. Yeah, right. that's yeah, correct. Seen some of us haven't seen them. Uh, I, I can't get Wi-Fi access right now. Council Member Wright. I'll try and be quick, just that I, I think there's two types of committees. There's obviously the things that are ongoing, like COLTA or the Board of Elections or the facade, where they have an ongoing task that they have to do, and that's fine. Um, I, I think the key with kind of everything else is that they have something specific to do. So to me, it's that whatever we're asking them to do is specific, realistic, and time-bound. We give it to them in writing. They know exactly uh, what it is, and then that time-bound aspect drives when they come back to us, um, and that should be spelled out at the beginning. Um, if we if we don't have some burning item that the committee is going to engage in that's specific, uh, realistic, and time-bound, I, I think we really shouldn't have the committee. We should be okay with um, you know uh, letting committees expire, ex sunsetting them, uh, abolishing them until they may be used at some other time. I'd be a fan of either the, the city council choosing the committee chair or approving the, the recommendation of, of the committee. And then lastly, I think there should be some instruction given to people who join the committees around compromise. Um, I know that's not often uh, 
something that's valued in Tacoma Park or valued? No, that's not that's not valued. But there's people with very strong opinions, and compromise isn't necessarily in their nature. Um, and I think that's some of the conflict that comes up in the committees is people basically want their way and they're not willing to get to a point of, of compromise. Um, so those those would be the big items for me. I'd be okay with specifically getting rid of the free Burma committee for now um, uh, and the committee on the environment. Councilor Stevens. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think a lot of good ideas have been uh, put on the table tonight. Um, one thing, though, I, I guess I see the committee's uh, a little bit differently. I think, you know, we've, some people have talked about the difference between the committees, um, and I think there are, uh, certainly are different types of committees. The uh, Commission on Landlord-Tenant Affairs is, is one that really uh, has a job to do. It is a, it's a work unit that is not uh, really directed by the council. Um, it is directed by the uh, uh, the city code, and uh, there are some other groups uh, that have work to do, like the Board of Elections, that uh, fall in the same vein. And then there uh, are a couple of other groups that I see. There's uh, uh, certainly this, the Council Advisory Committees, and I think those are the ones I'm most interested in talking about tonight. Um, other committees, like there are some groups that are uh, I think this, that we have uh, looked at them as being uh, volunteer supplemental staff uh, to assist city staff in performing some functions. Um, whether that's the way we really intended them to function, I think that's kind of the role that they fell into. Uh, and I think that those should not be necessarily uh, the city, I don't think the city council should have any involvement in those. I think if, if there are uh, to be projects that are to have volunteers, I think that is, uh, should be directed by the, uh, the city staff under uh, city manager's direction. So, uh, and then there's another group of committees that I see, and, and they're Committees where the council, they're not really advising the council so much as they are, they're kind of special interest uh, groups. And uh, we have some of those in the city that are not official city committees, such as the Tacoma Park Independence Day Committee, the Folk Festival Committee. Um, and then there are some that I think have been more formalized committees, but kind of fall in the same group where it's, you know, a group of people had a special interest. Uh, to advocate for maybe a given subject, and uh, they want to come back to the council and make recommendations, but it isn't something that the council necessarily had taken on or embrace, embraced as a particular issue, and so wasn't looking for advice. It was just uh, the group of residents that wanted to bring advice or, or uh, requests to the council. And I think those should be, again, um, I don't think the, the city council should have to form those committees and, and formalize those committees. I think those groups of people should, um, we should encourage people to form those types of groups and bring issues to us. But um, going most specifically to the advisory committees, I think those are valuable uh, resource extensions for the council. And I think for those uh, committees, this council should be much more directive in the way we deal with those committees. And uh, there's been a range of those in the past that um, we've appointed the committee or, or past councils have appointed the committees and they've had uh, good staffing with volunteers, they've had uh, things they've accomplished, but oftentimes they've kind of gone into um, uh, a lack of productivity uh, because they didn't really understand um, what it was that we expected from them or wanted from them. And so I think for those advisory committees, we should be defining what, what we think their mission is 
and we should uh, be delegating tasks to those uh, to those groups with the schedule of when we want results back. You know, if we're really seeking advice from the community and from these uh, group of community members, then we should uh, we should let them know what it is that we want and when we want it. And I think uh, that falls in line with some of what Councilmember Wright was uh, saying. I don't have the, the clever words that he was using to, to describe that. Realistic and time bound. Yeah, specific, realistic, and time bound. That, that we need tasks that uh, that let people know what it is that we expect of them and when we want it. Um, and then uh, I think uh, it behooves us to do something with that information when we get it in a timely fashion which is some of the complaints that we've heard from, uh, such as this evening, uh, from the uh, task force on... Wawa. Pardon? Wawa. No, not Wawa. Or, that's a convenience store, isn't it? Right. Right. Um, and then I think the other thing is that we should have, uh, as part of that, when you have a schedule, we should have regular reviews of those the committee work so that we can... Um, uh, look at the deliverables that we expect from the committees, and we can, um, uh, you know, entertain their their questions, their uh, uh, suggestions, and their recommendations. Um, and because they are a resource extension of the council, uh, I think staff relationship is uh, of utmost importance. I think it it should be that. Uh, staff is available to them for questions, uh, but it should not be uh, staff-directed work, and it should not be staff writing their reports. It is the committee that is uh, uh, helping, assisting the city council in uh, performing our function. Uh, and I guess I've rambled on for a while now, so pass the baton. All right, I'll take the baton. Um, I want to take just a second and remind us of one or two bits of the evolutionary process of how we've gotten to where we are. Um, for a long time, the council uh, interviewed people for appointment and reappointment at council meetings. There was a sense that that really wasn't getting us anywhere, that it would be much more productive to vet applicants and reapplicants some other way, and to use a process where we have essentially uh, an annual report to the council and a chance for the committee to come back and talk about what it is they're doing, what direction they might need, a chance for feedback, uh, and a chance for us to see what's going on. In some cases, that has worked pretty well. In other cases, when we look through this uh, chart that the city clerk has put together, we can see that uh, some of the groups we haven't heard from in as many as five years. And in the particular case of the one that's been five years, that's the Arts and Humanities Commission, and I think in many ways we probably are fairly happy with the direction of Arts and Humanities activities in the city, but there may be issues that we don't know about because we just haven't had the chance to... Uh, get together with them. Um, I think that there has generally been a recognition that uh, we wanted to not have just kind of open-ended uh, committees or commissions, I, but I think we've still got some of those hanging around. One that I look at on this chart and wonder kind of why we set it up the way we did is the Montgomery College Neighbors Advisory Committee, where it's uh, indefinite terms. We're not, you know, it's not really our committee. It's an advisory committee, but there's not really a mechanism for feedback. We, and the, in terms of their meetings, they're not really tied into the clerk, so that there are some, there are some difficulties like that that we may, in addition to the ones that the clerk listed as possible kind of cleanup items, there may be some other areas where we want to go back and look at uh, some committees or commissions or task forces that we have that need clarification in that way. Uh, one of the things that I think about when I go back to how committees 
used to work in the city there's this what i recall was that there was a uh, basically an annual uh, volunteer appreciation night uh, somewhat in the vein of what we have now with uh, ward nights uh, it was a chance for the uh, various volunteers on committees and commissions and task forces in the city to come in talk with the council uh, it was our chance to thank them and there was a chance to uh, you know have the kind of the punch and cookies route but it was also uh, an opportunity for us to provide them more formally with thanks uh, there were generally <coughs> uh, certificates of appreciation for people who were going to cease serving on a committee or a commission uh, there was one that the city manager and I signed tonight for somebody on what was it Colta, Colta where that where Colta came up with that or staff came up with that uh, appreciation and I think that uh, sure it's not much but I think it's something that uh, we could do to show our appreciation as it is now when people may have served for many years you know we there some of them may just kind of not reapply and go away and we there's just no recognition so I think we need to uh, not only look at how we bring people in and how we coordinate with the committees but also how we thank them um, one thought I had as far as how we look at the overall structure of the committees or commissions that we have and how we interact with them one way that we might think about uh, a, a way to look at whether what we what we have is adequate for what we need going forward is to maybe think in terms of our strategic plan and see if there's something that when we look at the plan we say well you know that's that's a priority that's something we're moving on but we don't really have any committee or commission that is providing input or advising on that maybe there's a need there I haven't thought about the particulars of that but it might be a way that we want to think about um, another thought that I had was there may be some ways that we don't have to uh, reinvent the wheel in how we deal with committees or commissions but there may be ways that other municipalities do that work very well for them I thought about uh, possible ways to get that input without a whole lot of effort um, wondering if we might want to either make a request of MML that they put out a request for anybody or that the city manager might want to talk to her colleagues in the city county manager association and see if there are ways that people think work really well for them I think we could ask the question in such a way that it wouldn't be difficult for them to respond we're not asking for their whole structure of how they do it but we might say something like gee can anybody who's interested uh, give us the three top things that they think really work for how they deal with committees and commissions they have a particular way of doing something that works really well or uh, they think it's uh, innovative and want to share it and sometimes those best practices requests can bring some really good information um, back to the beginning where I was talking about kind of where we've come from uh, one of the one of the ways that we're currently structured is that we we are supposedly going to get together with uh, committees and commissions uh, kind of on a quarterly basis where we have things set up for expiration of terms uh, rolling quarters through the year and a sense to try and spread it so that we're not trying to do everybody at once uh, there was an earlier suggestion that gee maybe we want to do something like now before we break in the summer my sense is on that that if it gets to be too big of a task it, it's hard to complete and you never it kind of spreads out anyway and that uh, maybe that quarterly way of doing it can work quite well uh, those were set up to try and avoid the kind of the heavy budget time uh, and make it easier to do so as we go forward and consider how we want to slice and dice how we deal with particular kinds of committees uh, we we should keep in mind that we're currently set up to get reports essentially on a quarterly basis um, and I think 
one thing that I don't think anybody has directly mentioned tonight is the is to we need to figure out whether we're happy with our process that we're currently using of how we uh, interview or vet applicants uh, where essentially the the material goes to the council member for where that person lives or works or whatever the particular aspect of it is uh, whether that is working for us whether we feel that's a sufficient way to process those those requests. I think that's something that we need to reconsider. Um, so that's a few of my additional thoughts beyond what other people have mentioned. Um, Council Member Schultz, is your light left on? Or no. Is it, okay. Something else I okay. wanted to add. Yeah, what else do you have? Can I add something? Yep. Oh, thanks. A um, couple of things that occurred to me listening to everybody here share their thoughts is that you know one thing I think we might want to think about is is a possibility of creating new committees to uh, and this is just uh, in sort of in the category of thinking aloud uh, to, to facilitate the cities and the county uh, the city staff and the council's work for example one uh, and some some municipalities have this uh, that I know of is a fiscal affairs committee. And the reason I suggest it is that in look, working at, on these budgets for the last two years, I realized that there's a, a vast gap between the knowledge that we as city council members have to possess in order to understand and approve the budget and what the average interested citizen has about the whole thing. And it would greatly make our job easier if there were a committee of people who had a chance to learn a lot about this process and how it works and the decisions that have to go into it. And I know there's a number of committees, a number of people who've already spent a lot of time becoming knowledgeable about that. It might be useful to have a committee like that who could sort of facilitate the, the, the the, uh, the education of, of citizens so that they better understand uh, how the city uh, finances itself. Another example might be related to the, the housing code. Uh, it gets enforced, and landlords don't understand it, tenants oftentimes are really confused, neighbors who live next door to houses that aren't being kept up get frustrated, and then when somebody gets a, a notice of violation, they go nuts because they think this is, you know, unconstitutional or something like that. And I know that the code enforcement staff works hard and they're really good at what they do, but they they um, don't get a lot of credit. Sort of a, a very thankless task. Uh, and it's I've often wondered why there isn't a committee of people in the city interested in the enforcement of the code and, and making it uh, and, and doing whatever they can as uh, uh, informed citizens to make the whole process work better. Um, another idea is, is really what is, I mean, some, some uh, municipalities assign council members to committees, to, to a committee sub subject matter area. And I just wonder if that's not an idea that where we, I mean, like we, we all have assignments on this council to serve on various committees of the Metropolitan Council of Governments, whether we're expert in that field or not. And, and that's what we do. Uh, and, and in the same way, I just wonder if, if there was a individual, each council member could be an, a liaison from the council to a to some of these committee or one of these committees, that that wouldn't help facilitate the whole process of, of uh, com improving communications, as Council Member uh, Snipper was talking about earlier. Uh, and, the, and the last thought is that I think when we appoint people to these committees, we we owe them uh, the the. Uh, 
the uh, we, we should take seriously the task of making sure that they understand what they're getting themselves into. This, we just sort of say, well, gosh, here's a volunteer. Sure, go and we'll appoint you and go and have fun. But shouldn't we sort of say, give them the information about the history of the committee, what its what its goals are, uh, who sits on it, what its current assignment is from the council, and then sort of say, you know, this is what this committee is about. Is this what you're in actually wanting to get involved in? Because if it isn't, maybe another committee would be a better assignment for you. But right now we're sort of extremely laissez-faire about the process. You just say, hey, you want to join? God bless you. Have fun and good luck, and we hope maybe you'll last. Um, we don't really say that, but it sort of works out that way sometimes. And I, I just think that we, we owe it to, to uh, our volunteers to give them a little con uh, context before before they, they they take the leap of faith that they do. I'm, on that last point, I'm tempted to say that we may give them more than you give us credit for. And I looked at the city clerk. I can I can imagine her thinking, but wait a minute, I give them a bunch of that stuff. I I do. Um, I either I talk to them myself or a staff member that deals with the particular committee talks to them. I let them know when the committee meets and they could go, they could attend a meeting. I mean, I, I try to do some basic um, information before um, okay. before an application comes in or when an application comes in, do communicate with the person. So it's like completely, uh, they don't enter it completely blindly. Yeah. Okay, good. And I also had a thought or two on the potential for uh, li council liaisons to committees. I think the concern in the past has been that uh, the, the worry is that the, the even the, with, without intending to do so, the council members can end up kind of being put in a position of the committees expecting that whatever the council member says represents what the council says, what the council thinks, and it can drive some some discussion or some decisions in certain ways that we may not fully appreciate or want to get into. And so I'm I'm kind of leery of heading down that path. So it's an opportunity for a council member to maybe manipulate the committee to I'm saying unconscious, meet their goals. unconsciously. Of course, it would be unconscious. No one would do that consciously. <laughs> um, any other points that people want to make tonight? Uh, we have a continued discussion of this item for next week, and I noticed that pending our uh, agenda meeting tomorrow that there's room on the following week as well depending on what we want to do so uh, there was the express desire of the council to uh, when we get into something like this not sp you know hopscotch our way through and have like a month between the discussions but to keep them going follow on in a close time frame so that we don't lose the thread and we keep going I agree. Appreciate so, so we, there's, that there's way. time to do that yeah. until we come up on the yeah, summer break. I, I, I should also, so I'm agree. looking forward to the feedback from some of these committee members about all these ideas that we've tossed out here. Because they're going to come up with some ideas of their own. That so I... Uh, <laughs> You have to wait. I, I I I hear I hear. Is it a firework or a mouse? <laughs> um, so maybe the uh, clerk can help us put together a kind of a maybe a little bit more expanded list from what was in the uh, agenda item tonight. We can try and break it into some groups of things to deal with looking for additional input, but also try and get a handle on how we want to proceed so that we're not all over the place next week. Yeah. But we've got some defined tasks that we want to consider, knowing that we're going to have additional, more long-term discussions. Okay. Anybody got anything else? Anybody need anything else in terms of direction on where we are on this one?
Yes? No? No. Okay. I would suggest you, if you have any questions, we can always use email to uh, fill in some of the blanks on some of the suggestions that we had. Right. I, I was just saying that to the city manager that I thought I may, as I look at this, may have a few questions. Right. Okay. Good. Thank you all. We're adjourned. So cool.